welcome to episode 158. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, we have a lot of really awesome art to check out today. So uh, as I go through the menu here, I'll do a little bit of an introduction as usual. For those that might be new, or for those that uh, might be watching this a little bit later on YouTube. Um, these are the recordings of the, the feedback sessions that I have with students. So uh, if you want to become a student, if you want to learn more, you can find a link to that down in the description below. So. I haven't been accepting new students for like a month, a little more than that, I think. Uh, just because the group is getting a little too big and I want to make sure that I have enough time for everybody. So um, so yeah, usually I'm planning to, you know, like in the future, opening a few spots every month, something like that. Finish the little kitty on the... <laughs> I think you, do, you did a really good job with that one. Uh, I did not expect the background to... <coughs> excuse me. To work so well. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, you, did a, you, did, you did pretty good. And yeah, this totally works a lot better than like a forest and anything anything else that we kind of discussed. So this is what I did this week. I finished the special gifts, which I sent to you back last week. So I started to work again on my original skin. Garden of the Oasis Kingdom for Nami. I'm happy to hear what you think about the splash art and the skin concept. Right on. Let's take a look. Yeah, love what you did with the, the cat. I mean, the cat looks way, way better with the shading and like feels a lot more fluffy. Like you can hold it almost. Really good job with that matches the character a lot better um and then the like the only thing i would say here in terms of like the colors maybe like focal points that the the kitten steals the show right now it's definitely the most uh you know if you look at it from a distance it's the character's pretty much invisible she blends with the background a lot so maybe if she's important you know you could uh, I wouldn't say maybe I wouldn't say necessarily to change the the color of our outfits, although like that would be an easy one. But maybe just with a little bit of light, um, could solve those problems. So we have you know the cat lit from above here, so a lot of light on its on its head, on top of the back, on top of the tail. On her, not so much. So the lights maybe not super consistent between the two characters. That's something that she could add. Solve that problem real quick. And right now, like the top of the head here kind of just blends with the background add a little bit of that purple light that purple stuff mm -mm. anything on the shoulders here some light would go through those translucent sleeves land on our arms and on the hair maybe back there set the shirt maybe here so just trying to make her pop a little more i think that would help the read overall like she wouldn't just completely disappear in the background like that or you could do maybe yeah maybe what you did here a little bit of glow behind her you don't want to add any light that works too that used to be one of my good old go-to tricks when the character doesn't pop enough just add a bunch of uh, bunch of air behind try to blend it nice nicer than that <laughs> And uh, usually that's gonna reveal the silhouette a little better. Anyways, a bunch of different, a bunch of different things that you could do here, or yeah, change the change the color of the entire outfit. So it's not purple on purple, but um, very nice. One one more thing, like composition wise, um, try to avoid having like characters walking directly on the edge of the canvas because it looks like that's what they're doing and that's weird <laughs> you know it's just a frame they're not able to walk on it but uh, maybe that's it maybe it's uh, the way that you pasted that on top i don't know but yeah no looking at the yeah like that was better you know we have a little bit of space that feels more comfortable this one here just feels like you you cropped out a part of the image so be careful with that don't want anything to touch the edges unless uh yeah in general just think of it that way it's fine if it crosses you know the edges uh, the the edges of the canvas if it goes through it no problem but anything that comes close like touches it barely and then and then that's it like that that guy's tail not a big deal because it's a small detail but that's something again that you would try to avoid usually I'm proud of you. <clears throat> yeah, she's supposed to be a like a warrior. I think it fits better to have more armor. 
it makes her look more more imposing like why would she need shoulder pads if she you know she doesn't fight people maybe i mean those could be just for fashion it's not like they protect that much but mm, i like it though this looks really good beautiful colors the colors work really really well very harmonious yeah, I would still recommend that you adjust the, the saturation of your colors in here so that it's just a little bit more exciting up here, less down down so, uh, down towards the tail. So maybe you know maybe that blue is uh, slightly different. Maybe it's a little a little more vivid than the blue you know down here. Maybe maybe you can saturate that a bit more in that one down there maybe even more just so that the leader of the blue colors is around around the focal point of your character that definitely adds context thanks for that <clears throat> i see all right okay so yeah I, actually that helps quite a lot thanks for that um i would definitely then recommend that you make your details bigger uh, especially if it's meant for like a skin seen from a distance you know that's why those characters are always a little exagger exaggerated uh and i think i mentioned that in the past also like to make those those details just bolder so that they stand out but even more so if it's meant to be seen in the game you know, the character is going to be moving uh, that's going to make visibility even even harder so always try to to bulk things up that's why blizzard is known for having you know just bulky everything like big shoulder pads big everything big trims uh, big bold details, like big chips in the uh, in the armor, just so that they they're visible from from uh, from a smaller size when um, when you play the game. And so, like all of this stuff in the back, that's super cool. You know, I love those details. But uh, you could probably slash the details in half in here, like combine some of those details, make the width of the uh, of the frame twice as at least twice as large, maybe more. Like the, these uh, these bracelets here on our arm. Maybe that could become two of them. Or maybe just one big one. Um, maybe two. Two would be, be alright. Yeah, like these things here. That could be, again, like maybe just one combined. Like combine all of that stuff into one. Or two. Uh, yeah, maybe two. So for her design, that would be, that'd be it. Because she's super cool otherwise. Maybe add some... Uh, let's see. Yeah, you haven't finished the details on the tail. Maybe uh, you can have something more here on the on the surface of her tail. Some patterns, scaly patterns, maybe. That could be cool to to break up kind of the uh, like the stick feeling that we get from like the marble marble stick feeling or like a torch or something. Maybe she had a bunch of a bunch of scales, and maybe some of these scales a little darker so that you break up kind of the pattern. Add a little texture in there. Yeah, oh, well, that's it. Cool. Um, looks really cool. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hammer on on the detail size too much if it wasn't for uh, like a skin in a video game. That's gonna be seen like this big on the screen. But since that's the case, uh, and that was the exercise, I would definitely make those details a lot bulkier. So that uh, yeah, so that you can you can see them like you can you can do the, this exercise on your end too. Just zoom out at this about this size here that the character will be seen at uh, when when playing the game, and see if you can see all the details. If not, make those bigger. Oh, that helps. Really cool stuff. Moving on to Gaelic. <clears throat> Let me sip my magic potion nice cup am i right right i did have a great week thank you gaily so i made some small changes to the ethereum palace mainly on uh, the occlusion shadows i would like to know what to think of it now also work more on the upper body anatomy i think the figure with the raised arms has some mistakes. Let's see. You're well. You're very welcome, Coco. Uh, 
Ooh. Ooh, that's starting to look like <laughs> slowly but surely starting to look like a 3D model. That was good. All right, so we got a little bit more AO down here under the bridge. The shadows of the bridge here. Yes, that's that's much better. That works a lot better. Yeah, I think I'll. I think it'll be similar to I think what I said last time or last like two weeks ago. I think the AO here in the tower is still a little strong. Like they stand out quite a bit. Like it makes them appear closer than what they are. And it's just like because you don't have that much opportunities to have a lot of AO in the foreground. And so maybe I would tone that down just a bit. Maybe more. Because it is a pretty big castle. And so these towers are relatively far from us. You know, if this little guy, if uh, this guy's as big as this size, I don't know, it's what, like 10 meters away from us, something like that. So either that, so either I would, I would uh, tone these down, so tone the, uh, <clears throat> the darkness here quite a bit, or just make uh, like the entrance a little darker, or make everything else darker so that they fit in better or have them fit in with the rest by making them lighter. And uh, if you wanted to make things darker, then yeah, maybe like at the bottom of the tower here, you could add some, ah, that's, that's a little, a little much, but maybe like uh, between the walls here, have a little bit more. Because this is against the lights in the corner, so you're gonna get a lot more light bounce there, a lot more occasion for the light to lose intensity. More here at the bottom so this is like a triple corner we have a line here a line there a line there like everything going converging into that that corner so whenever you have more than more than one corner let's say uh you know this is like the stair here that's one corner this here would be two corners right because we have one line here another one another one converging so it's not just two sides now it's a third dimension that's added and uh, yeah, actually, that's exactly the same thing that you have here, back there. So just a little bit more loss, uh, loss of light in that case. So the more converging light, the more, the more, um, the more lines that are converging, the more light is lost. So you could add a little bit there, and when that's the case, like in these corners here, would have a little bit more than in the middle. Um. So so yeah. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more shadow than here. A little bit more maybe on the sides there. Kind of everywhere against the lights. Here maybe you can have some more. Or yeah, or just make the towers a little lighter. But it's good. It's really good. And let's take a look at these muscles. Yummy, yummy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> All right, the back view looks great. Really nice. Um, just FYI, you know, for those for those of you that might not be uh, at that point left, at that point yet, but um, yeah, and for you too, Gailey, just FYI, but uh, yeah, like when the muscle stops here, right, it doesn't doesn't just stop there, uh, it needs to go and attach somewhere, so it's, it's, it's going to connect to that, uh, that big sheath, a big slab of connective tissue here, and go and attach here at the sacrum, all the way to the tailbone, so it's... Uh, like a cup shape like this the, there's no muscles down here it's just it's just white connective tissue but uh, but it's still you know it still goes down so if you're never sure like how where where should this go does this go like this does, does this end right here just keep in mind that it needs to go and attach at the sacrum down there at the tailbone and so it should should be aiming in that direction yours is so it's all good And uh, be also, like normally, like you wouldn't see, you wouldn't see these. Like you would see them through the the connective tissue sheet, but they would be covered by that connective tissue, right? Let me 
pull up my naked bro right here. It's that's uh, that stuff right here. See, back muscle continues here, attaches at the butt, and uh, that's all the white stuff here. And then you can see the two little bumps. I rotated the two little bum the, the bumps here for the character spine uh, spinning. Uh, that's uh. That's, that's that. So yeah, the back view looks, uh, looks really good. Um, front view here. Oh, oh yeah, it's pretty good too. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe your traps, like a little, a little, uh, pyramid -y. Trademark. Um, so yeah, just, just the slope a little more, a little more. So instead of going this way, like have them start maybe a little, a little softer. It's more like a parabolic curve rather than a, a straight line, right? So more like boing, rather than going from one, from point one to point A to point B. Because yeah, that's what the that's what the fibers do, right? There's like different attachment points, different directions to the fibers and the traps, and so like the bottom one here, uh, the yeah, the bottom ones will go towards the center, the top ones will go and touch towards the top, and uh, they kind of merge down there. So slightly softer slope. Other than that, it was great from the front. Really well done. Mm -mm. And uh, the only thing I'll have to say with, the, with this particular one here would be the, uh, where the lats attach. So that's going to be like right here. So instead of having this line continue somewhere, you just want to have it like go back in here. So like, this is the insertion point right there. So it all starts from there. I'm like it all ends there. Yeah, man. Sim similar idea for the uh, the neck, like uh, similar to what I mentioned there already. We're just just softening that slope here. So think of the like the the traps. They go towards the bottom of the neck, and then the st sternomastoids they go towards the the top the, the the top of the neck. And so these ones here are not gonna go straight up, right? They'll they'll go and attach a little lower. And so you get. Get more of that slope here. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's so thick in the, in the neck that you can't even rotate his head, like a, like a NF1 driver. And the last thing, last thing I'll say with the uh, the front one actually, uh, would be the chest. So the chest, think of it as as really two main sections. I mean, three is probably more accurate. And yes, in fact, there are way more separation than that. So it's correct what you did here. But uh, but think of it as I think it's easier to imagine as just two big chunks. So the top the top part here, most of that stuff. Uh, different color here. So most of this here will attach towards the bottom of the arm. And so in this case, you know, bottom of the arm, so closer to the elbow, so more like here. And the bottom part will attach slightly uh, higher than that. So in this case, you're right, but you could have that difference be a little bit more pronounced and that would impact kind of the, the silhouette. <laughs> can't see anything. That would impact the silhouette here of the muscle going into the arm. And so the bottom fibers, they need to, uh, need to go right here. And remember, like they can't go straight. Also, like they have to kind of rotate around the, the rib cage. Not rotate around, but go around the rib cage. And then the 
top. It slides a little bit more, it goes a little more directly there. So hard to see from this particular angle, but I like the connection point for that one would be a little under. Still, that one there. And it's not a good way to not a good way to show it, but <laughs> what's what's uh, good to, to keep in mind here is that like any muscle, right? It's not just muscle that we're playing around here. We have the bulk, like the mass of the muscle, and then we have the tendons too. And so the bulk of the muscle is going to be right there in front, just like that one here. Majority would be, would be right here. And at the tip, it's mostly just tendons. So it's not going to be super, like, there's not going to be a whole lot of mass there. So it's not going to... It's going to impact the, 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 the shape of it slightly differently. Let me draw it properly. So let's say a little more like that. The only thing that really that changes here is that line there. Like it kind of, you need the, that break in the line to reflect those two different sections. Uh, that's it. It's just not a straight line, straight line, but minor detail. Just good to keep it. What the hell, Gaelic? Pretty good cool stuff. Very good assignments. Moving on to Henry. Henry and his new auto, uh, auto um, self-portrait. Um, looking good, bruh. So using all the sculpting tricks that we covered, including the main brushes, office, or all the information about us. Oh, so <laughs> I'm just reading my own. Um, what's up, Henry? So I hope things are going, uh, going well for you. They're well for you as well. Just super hot in here today. We don't have AC in this house, and uh, like we moved here in April, and we're like, ah, it's fine, you know, it never gets really warm or anything. And even when it's sunny outside, we're good, but now, <laughs> now it's starting to, we're starting to, I'm starting to get a little nervous, because the hot months are ahead still, and uh, ooh, it's already pretty hot. I'm gonna be melting in the future streams. Be ready for that. So, um, other than that, everything's good though. So this is my submission for the ZBrush introduction class. I have a lot of uh, have a lot of experience working in 3D, so I really wanted to push myself in this assignment. Is there any way that I can make it feel more expressive and less and alive, and alive, not less alive? All right. Yeah, <laughs> should move. Well, can't do that. <laughs> at least the house is like in, you know against the sun it's mostly covered so usually it's pretty cool it's just like if the air itself is is warm then we're screwed fingers crossed <laughs> oh boy we'll just have to deal with it uh... yeah it looks really good damn Like nice colors too. Mm -mm. Now, one thing that uh, you could change with the colors, maybe like you know uh, how uh, like sharks and um, I, I think alligators too. Like they always have a lot of like discoloration around the mouth. Let me try to find one for. Like, Big crocodile. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. See how it kind of turns to white um, before it reaches the, the teeth. I think that'd be cool to add. Like that guy down here too. Nice. It's a, a nice little little touch in here because this guy feels like a little too like he's like the prince the prince of crocodiles and he's never had to never had to chew a thing in his life 
so there's no damage. But also, I think it's just, it's just the, the color of the gum that changes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, how to make it feel more expressive and alive. I mean, it feels not expressive, yes, but, but definitely alive. The alive part is usually in the eyes, and that's a nice, that's a nice eye. Maybe like a, a little human look. <laughs> what are crocodile? Oh, crocodile eyes like big crocodile eye. Eye. Oh, there we go. I know it's not a crocodile. It's a dinosaur, but it's a reptile. You know, it kind of looks like it. So I, most reptiles have eyes similar to this. Maybe something to consider. Make that look a little more creepy. I mean, it kind of looks creepy right now because of that. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like a, like a human that was transformed into a, to this weird dinosaur. Um. So yeah, to make it more lifelike, I don't know. You could uh, like right now there's no expression you know so maybe if he he was like flexing his muscles somewhere in the face like a uh, mouth slightly open maybe or you know about to like a little a little uh, little flexing in the in the cheeks looking a little aggressive although i don't think crocodiles really do that yeah they don't really have muscles in their face to do that um it looks realistic because <laughs> because they wouldn't be expressive anyway so uh, the main feedback that I have to be honest with this is not so much the, the asset itself, just the presentation and how it's, it's hard to read what it is from a distance just because like the nose kind of blends and, uh, blends in with the background, but definitely either make the nose brighter because right now, like when you look at this fast, it, it doesn't read like he's got a long nose, it almost reads as like this reads as the, the body of the head. So yeah, they're making the background here a little bit lighter to make that pop some more or vice versa, making the nose a little brighter. All right, so if it's like this, now the nose sticks out. All right, silhouette. Silhouette's a little more interesting now. Mm. Yeah, dude, like, uh, obviously, well beyond <laughs> what what the ZBrush class was uh, was meant to cover. So he did awesome years, beautiful assignment. Uh, so yeah, it will be more in the details, right? So texture around the mouth. It's nice that, yeah, the bottom jaw here is a little lighter. Uh, but maybe just push that, push that some more. It'd be cool to see also these, uh, these, like, slash details in the skin. Be represented in the actual texture as well not just the not just the colors right like this this scale here would probably have been slashed as well so it would have like a little bit of a little bit of a shadow all around it maybe like to make it feel like it's it's deeper a more serious wounds rather than just some dirt that somebody kind of just on top of it uh but yeah mostly presentation like if you could tone down like the light on here, that'd be nice too, because this, uh, this stands out a lot. So it's just a little darker, a little, a little dirtier up top here. Then the focus is on, on this guy's eyes. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Beautiful model. Moving on to Preston. Did I not grab the... Did I not grab the text for this? Mm. Let me see. So, <clears throat> uh, I decided to get rid of my lengthy text. Basically, are there any? 
any changes or improvements you would make to the anatomy design or right on Ooh, I like what you did with this. Later, Aria. There we go. Yeah, so a lot more information here. A lot more successful of it, uh, as a design sheet. What would be cool too, I mean, it would it would help us understand what happens too. I mean, this is pretty obvious. You know, shape shifting mask, any face. Oh, one thing I'd say. You know, when I keep hammering on uh, on people <laughs> when they have like black text and black background, don't do that. When you have background that's darker gray, have <clears throat> have wider text, like brighter text, and vice versa. If the text was down here, then it could be black. Or like a dark brown or whatever dark color that's fine but when the background is dark you want to have the opposite because uh, it makes the text a little hard to read otherwise for no reason now but i was about to say that maybe you could have this uh like in between like the transformation to give an idea of what that would look like maybe that'd be cool How does it transform? Is it is it pretty mild? Is it just like the color changes a little bit and then the nose adjusts uh, adjusts a little bit, and, like the features kind of just a little you know just a little change, or is it like FX heavy, right? So, and then and then you have the result. I think that would that would solve a lot of questions that you would undoubtedly have um, in the production environment. People would uh, come and ask you, how is that supposed to work? What does that look like? Yeah, Infinity Case is pretty cool. Uh, it, would be, it would be even better to have like maybe just a small scribble next to it uh, and something sticking out, like some some huge item that clearly would go through the bottom, but it doesn't. Yeah, right. So if you had this partially stuck in there. I think then it'd be pretty, pretty obvious that what this is about <laughs> yeah that doesn't fit but it does and uh, now this guy yeah yeah bigger trench coat uh, longer trench coat definitely definitely works that's good Maybe I know that I mentioned to have like some sort of a gradient right from the bottom and from the feet to the uh, to the heads, but maybe a little less than that. Like this gets pretty dark down here. I think you could brighten that up just a tad. And also like the shadow on the pants. I mean, yeah, maybe at this point just remove the belts or or have more belts. Just because the, the, the belts don't really read, you know, at first glance. And it's, it just looks like a lot of shadow. Like too much shadow. But anyways, with this... this uh... This thing here, maybe just a little... A little less. So still have a gradient. Still clearly darker here. Than it is up there. But it doesn't completely blend with the shadow of the belt and, and all that stuff. And since the, if the pants are this this bright, you know that bright, that's that's pretty bright. Uh, and probably the rest should be brighter as well. So that we can see it. We'll probably slide the. It's just like with the belt here. 
it's hard to imagine where the knees would be because it feels like the belt lands right on on the knee not underneath on the knee and that feels uncomfortable I like when you're walking it's always in the way like ah like it pinches your skin and stuff personally i'll just remove it or maybe like slide it down so that the boot is a little higher and it has like a third bigger belt maybe uh, I would do the same thing with the belts, um, with the feet, like just brighten it up so that we can see the details better. This looks nice because we can see those details, but the boots is like all of these details kind of, kind of disappear. It looks more like a, like it's just a black silhouette with some, some belt buckle floating in there. And uh, be careful presentation wise. Is the values here like the gray and this shirt very similar in values you can see here it doesn't go up or down it just changes in saturate saturation but it's basically the same value uh, be careful with that you want to make sure that the character pops so either that either you add some highlights on on top of the shoulders one way to do it like make him pop this way or make uh make the background slightly brighter locally not everywhere just around here where the values are more important probably could be even brighter than that a little too timid there. There we go. Boom. That effect. So either that or add some lights on his shoulders and he'll be all set. Yeah, looks nice. Really cool design. And if this is a if this is a coin, a coin like I think it is, right? It's not. I would just make that bigger so that we can tell if it's a coin or if it's a a ball. You know, it kind of reads as a ball the way it is right now. So if you scale that up just a bit, we could feel like the flatness of the the sides of the coins. I think that'd be, that'd be better. Because right now it's more like, what is that? It just adds questions. Hope that helps. Really cool, man. <clears throat> All right, Nabina. Uh, <clears throat> ah, same thing here. Little uh, values of the background and the foreground. Uh, not the foreground, but the background and the character. Too close. It's the same value, right? Completely horizontal. Saturation changes, but the values don't. So, all like, make this a habit, you know? Every time you draw a character and you try to present something, go to black and white and see if the character pops enough. Like, in this case, the old one used to pop more. <laughs> so, it was more successful in that sense. In here now the character blends even more with the background and we can't really see her silhouette that well anymore so again you can do you can do this locally right it doesn't have to be the same everywhere if the top of the character needs a little bit more highlight behind and the bottom of the character needs a little bit of like a little more darkness you can do that too old masters used to do that all the time when when painting portraits uh yeah, if it was like one side that was a little too a little too blendy with the background, then they just add more light behind, and then the silhouette is revealed. So in this case, since her outfit is pretty bright, I think I would go the other way, make things darker, if anything. Dark. 
Yeah, like a good way to think about it, <clears throat> then, uh, on the safe side, is if your character is mostly bright, then have a darker background, and vice versa. So in your case, your character is mostly white. Right, she's wearing white. And so you would probably be better off with a darker background and then to light light things up locally when needed. So right now, obviously, this is not going to work for everything. And apologies for ruining your effects here, but um, wait, now we can see the problem. Now the hair, it kind of disappears. So we could add either some light on the hair itself so that the hair has some contrast with the background or just locally maybe apply, add a little bit of lights back there, like around the head. Can do that too. Now we're starting to have a little too many colors. But maybe it's a little more like that. That's completely acceptable. Maybe down here too. Maybe like the side of the cape. Down there too. And you can just, you know, imagine the background is kind of like this, this foggy, foggy environment. Some, some bits can be darker. Some bits can be be brighter it's fog it's magic um, and then when you're struggling too much with the background like I'm struggling right now <laughs> to make this all pop and then probably just work on the character itself so still do the process you know okay is the background uh, is the character brighter or darker overall all right then slap the opposite for the use the opposite value for the background and uh, and then some parts are still kind of hard to spot here, like the, you know. Like this might work for the hair, but to have the, the blue haze all around kind of defies the purpose. So then, then just add light to the character itself. We'll just make things slightly brighter, like here. Maybe the cave's a little, a little lighter, you know, lighter purple, and then, then it'll pop enough. Or yeah, it can just be like some, some rim lights, rim lights. Rim lights just solve all our problems. We have some here on the sleeve. Just add some here on the shadow, on the uh, on the shoulder. Maybe you got some some red light there. Use that to light up the light up the hair, where the contrast is a little too low. Easy. And same thing here with the cape. Maybe that that reflects a little bit of the red. And down here, uh, just make that bright. Slightly brighter. Purple. And then you kind of go around your character this way to make sure the silhouette pops everywhere. As best, as much as you can. Hmm. So yeah, in here, um, it's the presentation, the, the biggest, the biggest issue. Character looks really good. I love what you did here. Like the blues, it's just the values read much better. Here's too high contrast. Now the contrast is it's just nice. Um, and yeah, the, the effect that you had works much better too. I think it'll work even better on, against a darker background because then you know there's more contrast, more more opportunities for you to to represent uh, to make that effect feel like more intense, more intense glow. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, little hits of light there. Very nice. Shading, beautiful shading. <clears throat> so I added the back view, because uh, yeah, to, so that we can see her cape. Nice. That's, that's the only important part of the back view. I added only color to that part, so I was wondering if that's okay. If you still have anything else to add, please. Oh, I see. Uh, of course it's okay. Um, but. If this is meant as a portfolio, like this would be perfectly fine for, for like a production piece, for example, like a production concept. You know, if you're in, you're in a team already working with a bunch of people, I'm sure they would need any more than that. That'd be plenty for them. It's just that if you're, if the goal is to to lure 
uh, <clears throat> like recruiters to your to your portfolio you just want to put a little bit more uh, like I'll give you an example of my uh, my blizzards art test for example uh, definitely way more than I would have needed for for like if, for the the actual job where's my try to find it first But since I needed to to impress, you know that just doing what's needed was not good enough. So I went a little crazy with the back view and just rendered everything. So rendered the front and the back the same way. And so yeah, when you look at it, it's like it's, it just feels more impressive than if it than if I didn't do that. Uh, let me try to find it here. Do I have that thing in there somewhere. Like I didn't need to render the entire back view, back view for this, and certain like probably overkill, right? That would be, and the rendering also would be a little overkill for 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 any concept uh, that's you know that we would do at work. But the goal is to impress. The goal is to to stand out, and so you can always go a little a little beyond. And especially here, I don't think it would take too long. So, just some quick gradient maps, and that's why, like, if you had them, if you're if you're using gradient maps to color, you just add these these bits here to the the gradient map selection that you already have, to the gradient map uh, the gradient map mask that you already have, and then boom, all done. Um, yeah, and the house. Very nice character. Aria, <laughs> yeah, so close, so close, but she's already sleeping. All right, so what's up? So I'm back this week with my fairy. As you can see, I worked through your feedback and wild myself with some improvements. Awesome. I wanted to show how I continued on this piece and see if you have uh, some further tips and tricks for lighting. Effects on a, and effects on a piece like this. Also wondered what kind of layer settings or highlights and shadows you'd use to make things pop. Uh, if I made this piece completely on my own, I never had, I never thought of adding some warmth to her magic as, she, uh, as she's the fairy of drops of light and her palette and power is always very cool toned. Um, I love how the soft orange glow and warm skin make me feel. There we go. Also, I hope I will be able to do that. <laughs> no worries. No worries. As I said, everybody gets feedback. Doesn't matter if you're here or not, you're gonna get it. Yeah, it feels a lot better. A lot more, a lot more welcoming. And I mean it's you yeah, know, it's a blue glow, but <clears throat> but maybe it's a, I don't know, maybe like the glow grows glow uh, goes through the crystal and like all the the blue frequencies get uh, get absorbed. Or yeah, like the blue frequencies get absorbed and then what's left is kind of this this warm glow. Uh, it's magic. You can always make reason. That's nice. Oh yeah, nice job with the... Good job with the face. Uh, <laughs> it's weird now, like, if this one feels so off in comparison. Like, this... Oh, I don't know what this reminds me of. This reminds me of like a, almost like a deer a little bit, you know, like the nose and the mouth, like a little too far out, too far out. Yeah, a lot, a lot more normal for a face, not a lot, a lot better structure. I like this a lot. Yeah, um, I think the the lighting in here is really good, except on on the face. So it's not bad. It's just that you probably wouldn't have as much as much light on this side of her face. So imagine that you're the light right now, and you look at her her profile essentially. Like what would you what would you be able to see if you were the light? If you were standing in her hand, looking at her her face directly. Mm, the 
definitely see inside of the nose. It's your profile for sure. But anything more than that, like you probably wouldn't be able to see this eye. Probably not that cheek. Maybe a little, a little more, a little bit more of the mouth. Maybe like not a complete profile, but right here, might be able to see like the eyelashes. <laughs> but that's about it. So, anyways. All this is to say that uh, that would be what receives the light. So if you, then you can look at it from this uh, from this angle again. <coughs> Excuse me, and then only shade or only add light to what you see here from this angle. So all this other side of the face, let's duplicate that. Um, multiply all of that side would probably not receive much light try to use a nice complementary color for uh, for her hair that looks a little too great here So yeah, like when playing with the shadows, um, think of complementary colors, warm at least, or at least like warm and cool colors. So if you're if the glow of your light is warm, then you'll want your like the opposite side, the side that's in the shadows, to be a little cooler, in contrast. And so like right now, this is uh, it's a dark or like a saturated orange. It's a little cooler for sure than this, like bright yellow. But maybe it could be a little cooler, a little a little more. So adding a little bit of extra blue in there, just saturating it just a bit more. Like that would probably be pretty good. A little brighter. Yeah. So then you get you get complementary colors almost by default, right? So you get or um, yellow, and it reads as purple. It's not purple. It's just the saturated red, but it reads as purple next to the yellow. Uh, so yeah, maybe use that for your uh, your shadow color. Same thing here, and then the same thing for this side of the face. Obviously, I don't want to get rid of all your shading in here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit. Just this way we feel like the light is definitely hitting her side, like that side of the face, more than the other. Uh, that makes sense? You know, she's not facing it directly. Maybe add some more contrast in the, in the hair there. So hair is pretty opaque, you know, this looks like a big, a big lock of hair. Could go a little darker here, make it seem like it's like some parts receiving the light, some other parts blocking the light. Same idea as the face, like treating this as a like as, as a spherical or cylindrical shape, so that one side gets the light, the other side doesn't. Uh, and then from this angle, like right underneath the chin, you would probably be able to see the hair, and then going over the ears, and like let's say the shoulders right here. Yeah, you would probably be able to see some of the hair back there, and so you might be able to add a little bit of lights to these right here. So it's tricky, it's pretty advanced, you know, like trying to imagine where the light goes, but it helps usually to, to kind of draw a little diagram next to it, not a diagram, but like a little, a little sketch and uh, try to imagine your delights and try to look at like, trace a straight line to different things and see what you'd be able to see probably and what, what things that you wouldn't. Very strange, you know, mental exercise to do, but but that's that's what painting light is all about. So, good shot. But uh, already, it's very nice, much better. Um, last thing I'll say, you know, we can brighten this, brighten up the skin um, with a little bit of a, a little bit of cooler, like purple, like yeah, with this with this color here, 
Uh, we could do the same thing with uh, the back of her dress as well. Because right now, like the bottom of the dress kind of tends to blend with the background a bit too much. We could, uh, we could introduce a little more contrast there. So, uh, so what? The dress is white. Uh, yeah, like light blue. Saturated, super desaturated. In the shadows, something like that. Again, just so that the silhouette pops, and we don't lose her in the shadows. And do the same thing with the hair too. The hair here all disappears. Oh no, where did it go? A little bit of lights, don't need too much, just a little. Make it pop, and now we see that it's there. Wow. Very nice. Lex, what's up? So, ooh, there we go. That works a lot better. Oh yeah. So I hope you're uh, <clears throat> Tripped over my own thong here. Hope your week has been fantastic. Yes, sir. Hope yours as well. Yours as well. Um, been slowly working on this piece all week. After last week's feedback, I decided to scrap what I had in mind and what I had and start fresh with a similar pose and character. I put a little more thought into the setting and now she's on a train and looking somewhere that makes more sense and draws people in. Yes. Makes a lot more sense this way. Yeah, dude. Huge improvement here. Um, so love feedback on the pose again and the perspective work. We'll have uh, she'll have baggy pants and shoes on. So I haven't focused on the feet too much. Right on. Yeah. So composition wise, it's uh, <laughs> eight one one eighty, a big one eighty um, compared to last week. Everything here works really well. Uh, so the focal point is makes a lot more sense she's looking to the side but we have enough space and and we have the window like we can see the window too so we'll be able to get it. at least some idea of what she's looking at you know it can't be that different from looking there to looking there if she's on a train uh it's just like the passing you know uh passing environment the environment's crawling by so yeah much 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 better in terms of composition i don't think i have much much left to add to be honest with uh in regards to the composition, uh, to the composition. Like maybe it's more like a warning that rather than something to change, but uh, keeping in mind like those tangents, right? Uh, that that land inexplicably next to the or right on the canvas edge. Be careful with, with things like this, like the foot right now crosses it, so it's it's OK, but uh, like it would be better maybe also for the perspective itself if the feet were were down there instead because right now yeah i mean it's uh, definitely acceptable like the perspective of the, uh, on, the, on the legs but a little weird with the perspective that you have for the like the train itself. Feels like, like if they were to touch the ground. So let me let me illustrate this. Um, so the table when it goes when it reaches the bottom here of the ground, they flush with this. All right, so this is the corner here. Table goes down there. So I think she's just maybe sitting a little too low for this to make sense. Because that's the height of the, that's the entire height of the table. And she needs space for the seat to be off the ground. And she needs enough space for those 
thick legs, they're not that thick, but you know, for the space that's left between the table and the ground, there's not a whole lot of space there. So, see, so yeah, I think the perspective could be could be adjusted a little bit, um, just so that the table is a little higher, appears a little higher. And uh, to do that, it would just be a matter of bringing like bringing the seat closer to us. So if the seat instead, you know, if the corner of the seat instead of being flush with the table was maybe a little a little closer here. So let me try to draw this properly. Yeah, because yeah, the seat feels pretty pretty far back there. So let's say that was the seat instead. Then I work, that would work a little better. Like the legs. Yeah, those are kind of right next. They're kind of right next to the to the seat itself. Um, she's sitting down somewhere around here, and that makes sense because that's that's still on the actual seat. So wait, you will need to change the the perspective of the seat probably if you don't want to touch the character too much, uh, which I think is probably yeah probably the easiest to do. Because perspective wise here, it's not it's not that far off. I think he just he just eyeball maybe a couple a couple of things, but it's you know it's believable. It's just like when we when we trace it and try to construct it, that's when we're we'll see a few a few issues. So we continue that that line straight. Try to find where the uh, let's use these windows here. So that's the vanishing point. That's the horizon. And so the side of the table that works here. Corner of these little booths that works. Bottom of the seats that works too. this line here just slightly off not a big detail but um yeah so overall overall it's pretty good it's just it's a pretty intense perspective like the focal the, the vanishing point is really close and so you gotta really be careful with the, the distances then um the depth in the um in the drawing because that depth is going to be like just a little a little change to the side let's say like a little uh, little nudge of the seat to towards that side or uh, towards the back can mean like two meters you know uh, two meters backwards uh, versus if the vanishing point was super far and like you're moving box here and you're shifting it to be to be there instead that distance not going to be that big of a deal but when it's right next to the vanishing point like a small distance can make can mean a big change in the actual the actual scene so i think that's that's just kind of what happened here with the seats um the best way to 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 build a scene like this it's a little a little complicated but you have to kind of start with one big seat first so let's say that's like the first booth that's the backrest so that's just kind of like the, like the side of the seat of the seat right so it continues this way But uh, yeah. for simplicity's sake, let's just consider that it's just a big square. And you will have to find out all the all the different uh, <laughs> my perspective is way up here. So it's clean. You'll want to find out like what that's what that distance is for the next one and then for the next one and then for the next one and for the next one because right now i can guarantee you that you don't have enough seats for that perspective like this here is super deep so much distance here like probably three four five meters and between the two seats um so to figure that out you just trace a line through the middle here going to your vanishing point then you take the corner, go through that intersection there, and again, and again, and again. 
again and it'll get narrower and narrower as you go back and so you can imagine you know if that was the side of your seat like this thing here where she might be sitting now uh, you would need a lot more of these let's say there's you combine two of these so like the other seats like right there the next one after that and so they get they get really really tight so I think it's just missing a couple of couple of a uh, couple of ones here uh, and in this case, yeah, it's just like this one seat here. And you just need to bring it forward a bit more and then have her sitting like straight on it. Uh, I think it would help if you if you uh, trace the entire seat. Yeah, not trace the entire seat, like draw the entire seat here. And use kind of a um, an ellipse for where she's going to be sitting down. And then consider that she's kind of like a cylinder just standing on that thing here shoulders all the rest and then attach the legs to that so yeah if you adjust the seat I don't think you'll need to change the character too much that's the good news um, but the perspective I think needs uh, needs some work here and th that should solve most of your problems Yeah, because of her pose, the top here, torso, looks really good. Uh, the, the the way that her face is uh, positioned looks really good. Profile shot works quite well. Um, and her going into her hips. Yeah, that works well too. Maybe you could have a little bit more foreshortening on that leg, on that left leg. Uh, it's tricky, but... Uh, Maybe continue the thing a little further back here, and so draw the foot as if we're, um, as if you're looking at your own foot, you know, like looking down at your feet. So you'll get to see a little bit more of the heel behind, and you'll we'll be looking at the foot maybe more of a, more as if it was laying down on the ground, and we can kind of see it without much distortion. The leg is distorted because it's going away from us, but the foot is kind of facing the camera, so to speak. So reinforcing that cylinder kind of goes in this direction and then the foot kind of pretty flat yeah nice pose no she's not gonna be this the, the distorted flat because uh, there's no lens distortion here it's just a single vanishing point so that helps there's no there's no like a third vanishing point up or down to, to distort her left or right Yeah, you just gotta be careful when you have things that go that go into the painting or come towards us because then like the foreshortening effect is gonna be super enhanced so you just gotta be careful again just where the feet lands you know try to imagine or right, if it touches the ground where does this where does this land compared to that seat does it land right here like next to the seat all good if it if the foot lands back there then you're like oh the leg would need to travel quite a bit too much uh, to be able to land there so just keep that in mind so that's why having the construction like just a rough construction of the seat, I think just helps a lot. Position everything properly. Yeah. Huge improvement though. And uh, it's like a really nice scene. So just gotta adjust the, uh, the perspective a bit and uh, you'll be well on your way. Awesome stuff. Moving on to the view. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, boy! So I finished the cyberpunk piece from last week and I'd love to get your input on the final image and your suggestions regarding what kind of things I seem to be strong or weak at and where to focus my study to level myself up. All right, so I've also started on another, on another piece showing two female characters capturing Hannah's fallen angel boy, Zacchaeus. 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 <clears throat> using magic and strength. I like the poses in the initial sketch, but felt as though they weren't very dynamic, compositionally speaking. 
portraits. I'm um, trying laying out the scene with some figures. Get a more dramatic angle and pose. Uh, this is just me or is that angle perspective? Used. I have to shrink their lower bodies because they don't have to hold this angle. Um, I mean, their lower bodies are oversized <laughs> to begin with, so... And yeah, the perspective is just going to enhance that even more. You know, just like when you have, uh, when you see a character from the sides, the mid section might be right down the middle, but if you see that same character, you know, super foreshortened, that, that halfway point might be like way up there. It's still a halfway point, it's just like because of the perspective, it appears higher. And so if the legs were pretty tall already, like this, this effect is going to be even more pronounced. Um, I don't know. Like if you're going to use this as a reference, I think I, I would use it as a reference. Maybe you can tweak the reference itself just a little bit, like uh, just shortening the legs, literally. Like instead of having like because the lower leg is also very long in her case especially so i mean you could just consider that she and that's gonna break the perspective a bit but it shouldn't break it too much just make her slightly shorter same thing here like the leg the entire leg push that in a bit so that the thigh is not as long and that shorter just a little and then use that as a reference because because that's a really cool angle and like you're you didn't you didn't keep much of that like the the, the we're lower and like we're looking up to these these three characters that's like a, a pretty cool shot they feel they feel more intimidating right now we're like we're just a spectator here we feels it here it feels like we're a spectator, but we're also inferior to the to the, the, the characters just because we're shorter. We have to look up to see everything. Here we're kind of at their level. Or, mm, yes, kill that fool. He deserves it. Yeah, I like the, I like this angle a lot. And I can impact you know how the how the faces are positioned, like this for example. Like her eyes are very, very foreshortened. Not not the eyes only, but the, the face is very foreshortened. Clearly looking up. I mean, she's not even looking up. She's looking pretty much straight ahead, you know, to the towards the horizon. But since we're lower, we see her as as if she's looking up. I think it's a cool angle. And it's just if you're gonna use those references, then just use them. You know, there's a lot to learn here. It's uh, they're really, they're really cool poses, stuff that that's gonna be useful. It's a good reference, really good reference. I would use as much as you can. Like almost treat it as a study first. Treat it as a, just you want to make sure that you get those poses down with like the basic cylinders first, getting the construction down. The right angle, the right perspective, and then and then you you dress them up. But anyways, looking at this, man, you did a really good job with this. Damn, that's like very close to what I had in mind initially. It's just like you executed it really, really well. Oh, the colors here, they work super well. I kind of like this cool analogous, analogous color palette. I think the two characters kind of represented by two different colors. Like this, the, the, the warm dude looks like he's defending. It's like the warmer color associated with like more coziness, more comfort. And then she's the, the evil character like coming with all her coldness, her coolness to invade the warmth, steal the warmth away.
yeah, nice values too in here. That works really well. Maybe I would just like add a little more contrast in the in the stairs. Like right now, the blue kind of affects the the whole stairs equally. <clears throat> Maybe you could have a little more, a little more light on top here, or, or 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 yeah, just a little bit less light in some angles here. So depending on the light, if the light's coming from from below or from the side or from above like the top or the bottom or the top or the the front of the stair will be darker one should be darker depending on the where the light's coming from maybe something like that Dude, that's, that's really good. Uh, I'd be very proud of this. Yeah, I can't think of anything. There's one thing maybe I was gonna say. I can't think of anything significant to improve here. Uh, it's just it's very like, wowy image. Uh, it's striking. It has a lot of contrast. Very interesting beautiful colors uh, maybe this guy here is a little too dark overall this looks more like a shadow um, even though like she's getting all this blue lights he's not getting any of it which seems like he probably should at least a little bit the stairs here are blue you know if the shadows here are blue his shadows would be blue too blue too yeah, just to, to brighten them up. It doesn't stand out as being like the only one that's kind of missing missing the the bounce light here. But that's it. Super cool, man. Um, so <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm gonna say since you do a lot of characters characters would be a focus you know making sure that you uh that you just get really good at drawing characters construction at least like final characters with all the details not not super important but making sure that you can easily draw characters in space like this this turned out really good but maybe maybe that leg is like the pose of the Maybe like the, the legs a little long. Not really a problem in this particular image, but yeah, the construction I think is important, and it's one of those things. It, it's so powerful. Like I didn't, I understood this way too late in my in my career. Um, I wish somebody like hammered on that a little more. But the construction of the character, how you can just draw a character like this, you know, like start with this. That's the face. That's plenty enough. And the neck and the torso. Then drawing everything in the right perspective and being able to pose these these simple mannequins that's huge and if you can do that fairly easily then uh then everything else will be a joke because yeah in here color is definitely not a problem i think uh, i think it's beautiful So yeah, focus more on the characters, to be honest. I think that's that's the weakest the weakest point here. It's not that weak, <laughs> clearly, but uh, the weakest nonetheless. So characters, proportions, constructions, and uh, characters in, in the scene, you know, like uh, in different angles. So scene from below, scene from the top, those kinds of things. Yeah, not character design. You know, I don't think I don't think that's super problematic right now. Um, it definitely be more the yeah gesture drawing. So keep doing that often. 
Uh, like that's just, again, like character artists do that all the time. I do that. I do those all the time. Um, <clears throat> not all the time, but uh, at least a few times a week, I have uh, a session with my family every week where we go and like, sit down, and do an hour of those, and uh, it just it's it's really really helpful. And that, and also just um, yeah, just extracting stuff from uh, from references this way. So kind of this this process along with it. So you look at that, like, all right, how, what is that like? How are these cylinders positioned in space? How is she constructed? Like it's simplest elements, just balls and cylinders. How, what, what's her torso like here? Um, like this, the shoulders up here, that's the front, bottom of the cylinder, and then the hips, the leg for the, 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 the cylinder for the forehead, uh, the, for <laughs> the cylinder for the, the upper leg, the thigh, uh, and then the other one, how is that position? Is it coming towards us a little bit? And being able to do that, you know, by looking at any image, that would be like a really, really good exercise too. And it's not just, you know, you start this way, obviously, but you don't have to just leave it that way. That's not interesting to you. You can always push a little bit more, like finish this off a little, a little better, had the contour lines, maybe introduce a little bit of anatomy in there so that it's not just like a bunch of cylinders, because that can probably get a little boring. But it's about starting this way. Like this is the, the like the mental step that you just gotta repeat and repeat and repeat until you see it without drawing it uh, when you look at references. That helps. Very cool stuff with you. Um, Robin. All right, <clears throat> so I've come, uh, I have some cool news for you. Ooh. What is it? What is it? I got my first freelance job as I know. What? Awesome. Hell yeah. So the downside is, uh oh, the <laughs> downside is that I had to do a ton of extra work in the past week and I didn't have much time for personal work. Well, uh, sure, downside, but I think that's worth it. That's awesome. I'm so happy. Um, but I still managed to work a little bit on the player character for my game. First, the old version, and two, the updated, the updated version. Put a bit of paint over. Ooh. Mm -hmm. and what is three then? The main character from another game called Super Lucky Star. Ah, let's see. A friend recommended me to check it out because it seemed too similar to my game, and I have to say the main character is those. <laughs> uh, I mean, this, this stuff here has been done a lot, right? So, like that looks like the uh, that looks like Robin Hood from the Disney movie. Uh, I've seen a lot of characters that look like that. Can almost look like a like like tails, you know, from from Sonic. Uh, so I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry about it too much, especially since your your shape language is kind of different. You know, like your you don't have like big hands and big feet. Your features definitely different. So like those two don't look anything alike to me. Uh, I mean, this stuff here, that every character like that's gonna have like every, every simplified animal is gonna have that. It's almost like everybody does that. So yeah, I don't know, <clears throat> since he's uh... a, <clears throat> excuse me delivering the mail uh maybe make him look like he can go faster <laughs> I don't know. like because uh, I, I like these a lot so maybe like from the sides maybe you could like push that even more now that looks like a mustache huh? maybe it could be just like the hair in the back of his head that's yeah, kind of sticking out a little bit like sonic i guess But no, I, I like this a lot. I like this little dude a lot. There's still something in the eyes that looks dead to me. Hmm. Maybe it's having just... I 
like a big part a big part of what makes like uh, cartoon characters work is that you don't see the entire uh, the entire iris usually it's gonna be cut a little bit I mean kind of like that guy but that tends to make them look a little cuter uh, and that's normal too. Like when you look at somebody's eyes, like the top of my iris is kind of chopped off by my my top my um my uh, top eyelid. And then just the same way, if you look down, you know half of a portion of your eye is gonna be not your eye, but a portion of your iris is gonna be hidden behind some some eyelid. And when it's not, it just looks like you're doing this, you know. When it's not covering anything, <laughs> so it looks a little like he's on crack or something. But um, I yep. Thank you, Navina. Uh, then I don't see any DM. Well, I'll check it out. Um, if it's too low, I'll look up for the uh, the higher res. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah. Anyways, um, whether maybe you know it could be the top if he's like uh He's like a more more blase character. Uh, very interesting. Like he doesn't really care. Uh, but that, that tends to give a lot a lot of personality uh, to characters. You know, just playing around with that. Or maybe maybe it's just bigger. So that's look like. Like this a part of it is hidden, but it's hidden on the inside, and so it just looks like he's got like big cute eyes now. Feels like you're, you're, you're communicating a little bit, a little bit more, um, a little bit more emotions this way. Like the character doesn't look like he's in a state of panic or, or he's just seen a ghost. Um, but that's really, I mean, that's really it. I think it'd be cool in here to have more, like more fur visible in certain places. Maybe I don't know, like maybe at the boots here, like some of the, some of the fur flares out, just to make it look like he's furrier. Maybe like the ears too. Some of it. Oh, maybe that's too much work. Maybe on the inside then. It's just like textures in the ears. I'm only saying this because you have like some small details. So that, that could be like a, a cool, cool hit of extra detail for the second read. And I uh, prefer the roundness here. If this feels like it's maybe going a little too low. Yeah. <laughs> I like it a lot. Oh, he's got that already in the ears. Uh, yeah, like the blue shoes. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I mean, Fox cartoon character. I'm. I feel like this is. Like, don't they all look like that? The blue, you know, it's just you're using complementary colors. That other person is doing the same thing. Orange and blue. Orange or uh, yellow and blue. It's kind of like a natural fit. You know, using the blue again, blue again. Like all these people, they have color theory in mind. That that little cartoon guy, blue. Also, it's just the blue works really well with the orange. Uh, so I don't know, you know, if if anybody ever mentions it looks too much like that character, we're like, well, it looks like all characters that are fucked. So, so get wrecked, bruh. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like the style is so different, proportions so different. Uh, clearly, this guy doesn't deliver mail, so it makes even more sense for yours to be blue. That's you know, that's usually the color we associate with. Uh, 
like USBS and stuff like that. Mail delivery services. So yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. And then with the eyes, uh, something. Yeah, no, probably just making them bigger like this so that they're cuter or like just moving the iris up and down. I think you'll be good. Uh, just avoid having it like right down the middle or no whites like this because it tends to make the character look a little dumb. You know, it's just like a, looks like a fish almost. What what kind of uh, like a bird, you know, where you can't really see the eyes that well. So it's hard to communicate emotions this way. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I'm the house. Maybe if you had like like a badge here, like a badge with his name, like hi, I'm delivering. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe that would help make him a little different too. But yeah, I don't know. Don't worry about that. Different enough. Your friend's crazy. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on to Angelica. Ooh. <clears throat> Welcome, Angelica. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything from you. So, um, you can drop the mist, Earl. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> this is my first feedback ever since joining the Art School Feedback Program. I'm practicing drawing 30 minute sessions with 30 seconds. And one minute in interval, interval poses. I'm using the traditional and digital. This is the latest result from the practice after 10 days. Let's see my question. What do you think of the latest results? Is there anything that I can improve? Probably. There's always something we can improve. Number two, is it uh, is it normal to feel tired after 30 minute sessions of practicing figure drawings for 30 seconds and one minute in a row? How do you avoid? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yes, it is normal. It is a very mentally intense exercise. <coughs> Excuse me. Like you're forced to observe and 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 produce be cre not creative but you're you're forced to observe and, and focus for a long time without much rest especially if you're timing your sessions this way in like 30 seconds all right next 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 so uh, what i might recommend and uh this is actually science to back that out and um probably also going to be the subject of like a future youtube video but um is to take breaks in your in your 30 minute sessions so like after you do like maybe one or two pose poses so after like every like two or three minutes take a break and don't do anything kind of just relax clear your mind don't you can do whatever you want just don't focus on anything just looking outside for just a couple seconds you know like 10 30 seconds um and then back into it and like just that is going to allow you to extend your your sessions a lot more um like studies that show it's not exactly that but it's studies that, that i'm talking about uh, it was like a like a twenty x difference, like twenty times more absorption of of information, and uh, also this process just allows you to focus for for longer by taking those small breaks. It's the same as sleeping, so it's uh you know you learn more, you you memorize more, uh, you store information while you sleep, and it's kind of the same process here. So instead of waiting every day to sleep, you you just do it in the middle of your studies, and so like taking short breaks defocusing by uh, during that time should help a lot with that <laughs> I speak from experience it does help a lot oh <laughs> all right well <laughs> don't need to call don't need to show that kind that level of respect I'm just you know I'm just, I don't know. It makes me feel old, okay? I don't like it. To be fair, I'm I'm old, but but not that old. Would have loved to see like the the before you know like 10 days ago what it was like but these are really good <laughs> it 
it's funny how the <clears throat> and soften like that too um like right, there's not a whole lot of difference between 30 and, and uh, 60 seconds like it doesn't look like you had twice as long you know to do this one versus like just that one for example i mean it's a little more accurate a little more yeah but But what usually tends to happen is that you're a little more careful with your stroke. And so each stroke goes a little slower. Uh, and in the end, the result's very, very similar. Um, so maybe what I would recommend for the future is uh, like keep the, yeah, keep maybe like pull these together. So like 30 second, one minute, 30 second, one minute, like varied this way. Um, like that could be the first session for like 15 minutes or something. And then another 15 minutes where... Uh, where you go longer poses, so like two to five minutes. I think that'd be, I think that force you a little bit more to uh, to observe different things, because that's really the point of doing the different time intervals, is to to allow yourself to focus on different things, because when you don't have much time, there's all the details kind of go out the window. You can't, you just don't have time to observe those. And and it's to be able to to ignore details when looking at references, that's that's kind of a big part of this uh, this exercise. The time limit forces you to ignore it. And so that you can better study from references later. So yeah, I would introduce like some 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 longer poses, but uh, these are really good. I would now be careful about um, two things here. It will take time away from from other lines, like from other details, but I think it's worth it. And it's just a really, really good habit to have. And it's going to help you long term just draw characters that interact with one another, that are standing in different different environments, um, just characters perspective in general. Um, but worry about the feet, the feet specifically, but uh, but the hands too of your characters. It doesn't you don't need to draw the whole hand, obviously, but uh, but spend a little bit more time on the gesture for the feet and the hand like that. It's, it's look, it might seem silly, but that's a good one. Like that feels solidly planted on the ground. You know, the fact that it's a straight line right here. Like this is a good pose, really good pose. And it's just, it's a tiny detail, but it makes a whole lot of difference versus this one right there. Like this one, it doesn't really feel like he's, it feels more like he's in the air, like floating in the air. The feet don't feel like they're planted on the ground. Uh, that's pretty good, I think, you know. That's the right direction, definitely. So more of that, more of that. That one, that one feels pretty good too. Uh, those, for example, would be like bad ones, bad example. This too. So you'd want to focus on the heel more than like the toes and stuff. So where is the heel? Where does that land? Where is that planted on the ground? And pay um, pay a lot more attention to that. And same thing with the hands. Um, sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes the hands don't don't really add anything to the gesture, but often they do. So they continue like the gesture of the arm. And so if it flows this way, if it flows like this, like this, this it adds a lot. And so just put a little more emph emphasis on those. Like in here, not like, like a finger sticking out or no, that could that could completely change the gesture. If it's a fist, that could completely change the gesture too. So it doesn't have to be a whole lot of details in there. Like I said, it's, doesn't need doesn't need it. Like that's that's enough. But but be mindful of the the addition to the gesture that the hands and the feet bring. Um, but uh, but awesome stuff though. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what uh, what else what else you uh, what else you submit. It's a really good start. So welcome, Angelica. I hope that helps. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do uh, Jenner and then take a take a break. All right. Oh, the heat wave is treating you nicely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still, still acceptable. 
Now I got a little, little breeze coming in. It feels good. Probably by the end of like by October, which is usually the like the hottest month in California. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be crying, but so far, so far. Hope you've uh, avoided melting too. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. That was my stomach. I'm hungry. Um, so this week I spent a lot of time reorganizing my works and preparing to send out my portfolio for work. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if you have any tips and also would love your opinion on a few pieces that I'm not sure if I should keep and if I should keep them. What is the artistic value for recruiters and what can be edited to make it better? <clears throat> so I, I'm aiming for a splash artist illustrator role. Any, any feedback? You don't say. <laughs> Um, but so that's good. It's a good a good part about your art. That's very obvious. That's what it is. Uh, they all have that quality. Um, so, I'm, uh, uh, so also I'm wondering on a material sheet with these elemental elemental cats, should they be considered for the portfolio as well? Thank you for the help. All right, let's take a look. Current lineup. There's something I would take out from here. Mm. I was gonna say like thumbnail wise, I would probably change that one. Like I don't feel like clicking on that as much. Like I can kind of expect what the rest is going to be. Uh, colors don't seem to be super interesting compared to like you know, compared to something like this, where there's a lot of details, a splash of color, like, I want to click on that. So maybe it's just a thumbnail, you know, adjusting that a little bit, or just playing around with the... Yeah, maybe the colors in here, values. Anyways, good lineup. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're not sure about these. Hmm. Uh, one, two, and three, I think I would definitely keep. Like to know. To know when to kick them out of your portfolio is really like when you feel that you could do much better than that, then that's that's a good one to, to kind of just get rid of. But these I have like a, ton, a really good amount of, you know, nice qualities about them. I think those I think those would help you. This one here, that one's nice too. It's just the uh, the character itself is not not as interesting just because we can't see the face. Um, the, the focal point may be not as, as interesting. Like it's not communicating as much emotions as like, as like these are, for example, like that script. You're like, whoa, what the? This one here as well. <laughs> Calm down stomach. We'll, we'll sort you out later. Here, like something's happening. You can see the emotion of the dragon. It's like cool stylized dragon. Same thing here. It's just, it's just weird and kind of creepy with the hands coming out of the ground. That's cool. I think that one just doesn't have like that that cool. Like technically, it's pretty good. It just doesn't have that 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 interaction, I guess, that you would definitely expect from like a splash art. Interaction and like emotions, how much emotion it can communicate. No, no, I don't need the full version of everything. I'm just. Like for that that particular thumbnail, I would adjust it, just because most recruiters probably won't look at the whole thing. They'll just look, click on bunch, click, click the ones that that appeals to them the most. Click, all right, click, 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 and then move on to the next one. They go through things very very quickly because they see a ton of artists all the time. So, 
<coughs> Excuse me. So you want to make sure that your thumbnails are just they're nice, you know, that people want to click on them. Like, that's a great one. That's a great one. That's a great thumbnail. Great thumbnail. Maybe you could, maybe you could have uh, like a an area that has a little bit more contrast. <coughs> Excuse me. So maybe like a, like focus on on this instead, like this frame here. Uh, that one. That's a nice one. Very nice. Ton of contrast. Very nice. Very nice. That one. Yeah, kind of a weird thumbnail. Because the back feels like it, it got auto cropped. So I would probably adjust that one. Um. So yeah. Keep that in mind. A thumbnail plays a big part. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, I think like I think with like a, like an art director that really knows what he what he or she wants, um, I think you you make a great employee. I think you'd be uh, like that could be that could be professional work. You know, maybe if it was like art directed to to look a certain way to 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 convey a certain message, um, you know, something that matches like an existing game or whatever. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to adapt to that. So. Exciting times. Um, yeah, and if you want, um, if you want a recommendation letter, I'd be happy, happy to put my name on that. Just, uh, just keep in mind that those, uh, those positions are uh, in short supply. You know, a lot, a lot shorter supply than, let's say, 3D character artists, for example. So don't be discouraged if it takes if it takes a little while to to get some traction and to get some some replies. <coughs> Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. Not that it's not good, but I think I would probably remove that one, like from your portfolio. It just doesn't seem to be at the same level as the rest. Like it's just color-wise, not as interesting, not nearly as interesting. Um, the design is, you know, it's good, but it's it's not like like splash splash art good like like those are. Because splash art, it's you know, keep in mind, splash art is a promotional tool for for uh, for studios. They use that as as something to attract customers, as to sell a product, and so they want something that just really pops, something that grabs attention, something that communicates, that goes and and pulls the emotion, the emotions of people. Like those are the kinds of really, really good uh, 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 good illustrations that that you should aim for. Good qualities in the illustrations that uh, that they look for. So yeah, that's just my recommendation though. Um, like I said, it's not a bad piece at all. It's just like compared to your, your newer, newer work, feels like you've leveled up a lot since. Like your new stuff has a lot more different types of contrast. And good luck. Yeah, kind of what Joe is saying. Yeah, this one, it's a little harder to understand what's, what's happening. So again, because we can't really see the face of the character, so we're we're forced to look at the rest. Like, okay, what's the setting here? What's happening? And it's, it's just a lot. Right? Oh, is that a character? Oh, that's a character. Oh, okay. And where is he coming from? And just, again, technically nice, but doesn't... It's like a book that's that's where the, the paragraphs are a little weird, like they chopped weird. Anyways. What the hell, Jennifer? 
very nice and uh, best of luck and yeah don't hesitate happy to put my name on a recommendation letter if you think that would help so we'll uh we'll resume with uh laura in like 15 minutes i need to go eat something my stomach keeps yelling and uh, i gotta take care of it loosen up my legs i recommend that you do the same it's not good to sit for too long be right back then eat Change my damn thumbnail again. Keep deleting it. Damn you, you. Zoom, Laura. You had a great week too, Laura. Thank you. Um, so today I have two pieces to show. Hope that's okay. Yes. So for the top one, I tried to pick colors according to the color wheel, and I already got some helpful tips from the lovely community member on Discord. Members, <clears throat> the bottom one is an update from my last week's submission. I implemented your suggestions, worked in, uh, worked on the background, and some details on the skin. Uh, before I call them both done, I appreciate to hear your opinion. All right. <clears throat> anyways but <clears throat> but it does look quite nice now um, the only thing I would say about this would be now like the the composition where you probably could use something something here something something else something more what could it be hmm. cuz like his uh, his gaze is to the side, so he's looking this way, and it kind of makes like the, the front part here, the like whatever space is in front of him, kind of pointless. So maybe if he were staring into the distance, instead, and then if there was, even even then, like he would, there would probably need to be something else justify all the stuff here or 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 you make those those structures in the back here those uh, those pieces of furniture a little bit more visible so add some contrast there so maybe like the side of the door here catches up some more lights so brighter maybe mm, maybe like that side here too I just just need something here to to justify the space to to bring back the balance because right now if we look at just the visual weights like we have strong weights here like a little bit there but it's like a big big gap there 
<clears throat> so that'd be the only thing with this one. Otherwise, uh, that looks really nice. Yeah, maybe it's like the maybe it's light too. Maybe you could just do do it with the light. some like, visible dust particles in the air. It's, I don't know, to show that the air is pretty stale. Maybe that'll be enough, eh, but probably still need a little bit more extra contrast in the background here. Yeah, so for that one, that's, that's about it. That one's good. <clears throat> Adjusting a little bit of the shading here on the neck. Trying to find a reference real quick. Um, thread from. Similar highlights, but but uh, it's just like I think it's just like the shelf here, like like that this creates, like the neck, the way that it goes in, you know, it goes in up here, and then the clavicles are slightly lower than that, so like the slope at the bottom it would definitely impact impact the lighting. Kind of like that a little bit. Alright, so the neck a little bit more shaded, and then the, the clavicles in the bottom of the neck a little bit less. If it's a woman, maybe you wouldn't notice as much, but for a dude, I think that would be a little more pronounced. Especially because the like this year, the larynx is going to be a little bit more detailed. I know it's an anime character, but a little bit more of that. Not a big, it's not that big of a deal to be honest but uh, but the neck is it's right there it's open and so i think yeah just polish that part up just a little bit with uh, some extra references also <clears throat> same similar idea like the the light coming from above um casting shadows in that direction and so probably the front of the chest like wouldn't be as light as that Maybe the top here, like right after the clavicles. But beyond that, maybe a little darker. It's more it's more like parallel to the lights rather than facing it directly. This bird's, uh, this bird is yelling loud. 
Calm down. So, maybe like towards the top here where the Pectralis Major kind of starts to, to bulge, bulge out a bit. But after that, I think I have to keep it pretty, pretty flat looking. adjustments but but overall it's really good uh i would did i do this like um, yeah i think that was me right i added a little bit of red that kind of looks good maybe i would add some here as well in the transition maybe just warm up your shadows with uh, a little bit more red uh, make him look a little, a little more alive of the same on on the shirt itself i love how you do the folds though those folds look great uh, i think it would be just more like the overall shading to represent the volumes i think the shoulder is fine here It'd be more like the the chest here it probably would would kind of i don't know if you can see it from this angle i'm trying to have a dark shirt so maybe not the most obvious uh, but like see how the light here how that that part catches a little bit of the lights and then here's the more shadows and then light again yeah, a little more of that, maybe. Like, like, wait a minute, what happened here? There we go. Maybe a little bit more of that. Again, just to make him feel like he's, he's buffer, like the chest is kind of sticking out. Side too, but that side mostly, mostly shadows. Yeah, and then that rim light, I think I would carry it a little further into the into the silhouette because it is the sky color. The sky is the sky is everywhere, so it's not just going to be from the back. It'll be kind of everywhere from above. Some slight, you know, shading, shading tweaks that you could uh, that you could do here. Very nitpicky. This guy here, I love the the extra definition here, and the muscle looks nice. Very nice. Maybe, uh, maybe the forearm. You could have a little bit more of that, that sharpness too. We have the core, uh, the Berkeley Radialis group. Kind of bulging out a bit. So yeah, like look at references for the the this area of the arm. That's the way I did it here. It's not quite right. That's not it wouldn't bulge that much. Maybe more something like that. Um, but yeah, look that up just to be sure. And the, the back arm still feels a little strong. That's it. Got the bicep. Yeah, I think it's just like the the shading. Like it feels like this is the this is the shape. This is the arm. That's why it feels like the shadow like the light transitions into the shadows a little too soon. Because essentially that. Mm. Where did it go? No. All right. So I think you just need to, yeah, to carry the uh, the shading. The, the highlights a little further in.
But again, find a reference for that because it's a tricky angle to get the, the, the biceps and the shoulders to look good from that, that particular angle. But something going on here. That helps, Laura. Moving on to Peter. All right. This month, I wanted to show you a commission I've done for a client who... Thanks to you people actually want me to draw for them, which is so hell yeah. What? Another another commission? Bruh. Look at that, man. Hell yeah. Um, so this is probably my best, uh, the best that I can do right now. So I need you to tell me what are the worst aspects of this painting so I will know what I should focus on to, impr uh, to improve now. I have a question about the painting process itself. You always spotlight that drawing is very important. And that we should pay the most attention to the line art, but I feel that this painting, uh, that painting with shapes is easier for me. At uh, the left is my setup for this painting. I actually don't like to leave line work in my art, so I should. So should I really spend a lot of time on drawing, which is later totally gone? Um. This is uh, this is kind of like the uh, the recipe, right? So. At the beginning you want to follow the recipe because you don't know what to expect you don't know what changes in the recipes are going to affect the end result and so it's better to go through the recipe a bunch of times and then uh, and then slowly by slowly you start to modify certain things and then you see the impact at the end um, so of course there's many ways to to go about this uh, the way that i teach is just it's better to learn that way um but d different artists have different you know different different favorite favored recipes and so the recipe will likely change over time uh, depending on your preferences so yeah, uh, yeah there's no problem at all to, to do uh to what you're doing here it's not moco another doggy that's angry Mm. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> nothing wrong here. I used to do this this process quite a lot myself. Can't really, you know, can't really say anything. Uh, it's just, um, just you know, for others, kind of more of a more of a warning. But this. You need you need good fundamentals to be able to start like this. Uh, if your fundamentals are shaky, the end results you can almost count on it not being the not being the best that you can do. And so, so yeah, that's a good example of you know after you follow the recipe a, a lot, you understand the the logic behind what's happening with the dogs. You follow the recipe a bunch of times and you understand where it leads to what what you know what the logic uh, behind it. After that, you can start to tweak it. So that could be one tweak. Remove the line art straight, straight into the flat colors. Sure. And uh, yeah, the results great. And that's awesome. Um, there's not a whole lot that I would change here. Uh, the character does pop. Pretty well. There's just cer certain um, certain areas where we kind of lose it a bit into the background, like like right here, where the value is not as, as dra like the change is not as drastic as the the torso, for example. So back here, maybe maybe you could go. I don't know. Darker? No. Brighter. air behind here it's just to I mean silhouette pops and more in front and the back like that kind of stuff that's too much obviously but but something like that uh, and then and then can maybe brighten up the spots feels like 
kind of like a, an empty area here that you could use maybe to bring in some extra lights. Extra contrast to make this pop even more. But man, yeah, it turned out awesome. Uh, love your treatment of the eyes here. Good colors. The The focal point kind of works in the sense that you have like a lot of white and then the only thing that's kind of black is the focal points and it's, it works pretty well. Maybe you could warm up like the, the red around the eyes and around the face, make it like use a more berry red for the rest and then warm up that area just so that it stands out just a little more, maybe. Because right now I see myself, I notice myself looking at that quite a bit versus, uh, versus him. Then, then that works a lot better. Pulls a lot more attention. Bam, dude. Overall, awesome stuff. So, a little bit of composition. Um, adjusting and, and in the sense like a yeah, value adjustment, making sure the character spot. Like here, you know, the hands, the hands and the the snake, they kind of they kind of get lost. So you could you could adjust the contrast here a little bit too uh, to make sure that the hand really stands out as being in front. Like it worked it worked better here in your sketch. What's up? So, I hope that you've also had a good week. I sure did. So, I've corrected both um, both pieces from last stream. Do they look better now? So, you suggested adding secondary light source. I went a bit crazy with the painting. Uh, with painting a big energy ball to emit the blue light. But there seems to be something missing for them to play well together. Um, the idea was the energy ball is some kind of attack from behind. again so this is a little bit more abstract maybe but uh, you know when you play with like different elements of art you have you have lines and you have so the lines will make the eyes travel right so like the line here the line there this curve here that's that's gonna help the eye travel through the painting and then you have anchors and like points dots that will anchor the attention and stop the movement and so if you're traveling here you land on something like that and that that anchors you there a little longer it'll, it'll just pull a little bit more of your time <clears throat> so you just want to be careful with that uh, usually you want the the focal point to be the anchor the, the strongest anchor at least so that uh, you know people look at that more than they look at anything else um, and then right now you know this may be acting as uh, something that's a little too too strong of a pull too heavy visually. Uh, one way that you could change that is just to make it much bigger. So make it so that it's 
not no longer like a point instead it's going to be more of a curve so if it takes this whole space now i mean that's probably a little intense but uh but now it wouldn't act as an anchor as much so that's one way to go about it maybe it's just uh, yeah maybe it's just floating on on top of this big this big sphere maybe that's the earth <laughs> And he's floating in space. He jumped so high that he's now in space. Oh, snap. Um, and the only other thing here would be the, the hair. Now we're kind of losing it. Lose the contour. Be careful not, not to do that too much. So. In some cases, it's fine. You know, if you want, if you want, say, like a more a horror type of painting where the character needs to be like creeping out of the shadow so that it's fine in that case to, to have the character blend with the background. But, but here it's more of a character concept piece. And so you want the character to just to really pop. Very simple though. I'll just add a little bit of a, a little rim light and then problem solved. I love the lighting here, lighting up the shadows, that's super cool. But yeah, I would just make sure that it's not like an anchor that doesn't doesn't attract too much attention, doesn't steal the spot, the number one spot from the, the actual focal point, which is this guy's face. That's about, that's about it. Um, and then number two. <clears throat> Put Isabel in the middle of the scene and made her bigger. Started line art, line arting, <laughs> line arting it. Nice. Uh, is there anything striking? Before I finish, I want to colors. Ah. Yeah, that's better. I would still push her towards the center a bit more. Just just because of the weird line that this creates here. Like his shoulder kind of continuing in a hair. Kind of get this, uh, this weird, strange coincidence where all these lines just happen to line up almost perfectly well. Try to avoid that unless you're you're deliberately trying to do that. He just pushed her more to, the, to, to her left, to, to our right. like that <coughs> nothing gonna be better wouldn't have this problem anymore so like think of it this way she um, you have a lot of weight on the side a little bit on that side and so she should not be perfectly centered because then the balance will be tilted more towards the right right it's a total the, the right side will be heavier if that were the case. So she should still be a little off center that way to make sure that, you know, like the, the the fact that this is not as heavy, you bring in a little bit more heaviness by by pulling this to the, to the left just a bit. So not quite centered, but a little more centered, I'd say. Otherwise the balance is a little too much on the left, not enough on the right. So. A little abstract for sure but um, I think that'll make a big difference especially since you know all her legs are pointing in that direction like it's she's a lot heavier towards her right towards our left I don't know it looks good it's really good that helps me tell you looking forward to the Ooh! Ooh, snap. Man, I love that texture. Look at that. Yeah. Mmm. Looks yummy. Uh, so you're probably bored of... No. As long as, uh, as long as there's some good progress, which there is, I'm all up for it. 
So, but it's finally done. So personally, I'm happy with the results. My goal here was to prove myself, <clears throat> prove myself that I could paint backgrounds and did. Uh, awesome, dude. So what do you think about the end results? Also, I have a question. I'm planning on applying for illustrator position in my local area. However, I have no experience. So what do you think I should add on my CV? Um, I feel like I leave, if I leave the experience part blank, I don't get any job. In my CV, I already added my portfolio, which consists of my best pieces in illustration and character design. Ah, just lie about it. Pfft. Just be like, uh, you've done a let's you can always say that you've done a lot of freelance work, a lot of like, yeah, con like, uh, uh, um, commissions. Just don't call it commissions because commissions doesn't seem as doesn't sound as as a uh, as serious, but just say, I've done a lot of freelance work, freelancing for X many years, you know, for different independent clients. <laughs> just how you how you phrase it. Still correct. It's still not a lie. <clears throat> or maybe it is, but I don't know if you've done if you've done any commissions. It doesn't matter. You know, if you did commissions for free. They'll never know that. Um, but yeah, I would I would add that. You know, it's it's a stupid thing to ask in the first in the first place, anyways. Because yeah, I mean, most artists that are starting they have no work experience, and you got to start at some point. And so yeah. Just, uh, just twist, twist reality, twist the truth a bit. <laughs> You're spamming too much. This is the big one already. <clears throat> see, you got, you can see all the brush strokes and everything. I got, I got your message already. A, a, white, uh, a little white lie. That's what I would do. <clears throat> That's what I did to get my job at Blizzard, to, to get the salary that I wanted. They asked me, like, you know, what what was my salary when I was working at Blizzard? Uh, when I was working at the previous place before Blizzard, I doubled it, and it was it was in Canadian money. So in reality, it's more like I tripled the salary that I was actually making. <laughs> Whatever. What are they gonna do? <laughs> Nothing. Um. this yeah really nice job here uh, skin looks beautiful love the texture on the tail the only thing maybe um, when it comes to the shading would be like the tail like the tip of the tail feels a little too thick uh, and I think it's just because of that shading right there like that seems to add like it's almost you know like the top of the cube and it's the side of it Wrong color. And this is the side of it, so it feels like a really thick, you know, thick fin. Not fin, but a thick tail. So yeah, we'll just flatten that out. As if it's just a sheet of paper laying on the rock. Uh, and then maybe like overall values could add a little bit more shadow behind the character. Because it's sunset, so it's not gonna be super bright outside. You're not gonna get a whole lot of bounce light in here, and so like realistically, it would probably. I mean, you don't need to go that that dark, but realistically, it would probably be more like. Actually, not darker than that. Like closer to that, you know. That doesn't look too good. Um, you don't need to. Don't need to copy reality but definitely yeah, back there you probably have a little bit more shadows because all of this is just indirect light from the sun it's like bouncing around and where bouncing around in the sky uh and then something will land in here something will land maybe on the top here but unlikely that it'll escape from underneath this same thing down here again it depends on the time of the day you know if the sun is shining straight down uh, you're gonna it's gonna be at its its highest intensity you're gonna get a lot of bounces at night it's less intense because it has to go through a lot more atmosphere at night but in the in the, in the evening so yeah maybe a little more contrast in the in the shadow area the shadow side shadow side so like in her back maybe you can darken that just a bit You know, just to make the light in front of her appear more intense. Like, yeah, it really is a sunset. Like, she's really 
which is really getting lit in the front and not so much in the back. So adding a little bit of that contrast. But I think that turned out awesome. One thing, one last thing actually, that I would probably uh, refine is like this area here. Because the sun is pretty important in here. You know, it's like a, it's really bright, shiny, shiny part of the picture. So a lot of people are going to look at that. And like surrounding, um, <laughs> surrounding the sun, there's, it's a little fuzzy. So yeah, if you have maybe like more details, maybe if those, those clouds are a little bit better defined, if those are clouds. Uh, and then like the horizon, being able to see the horizon a little more clearly. With like the sun, you know, the sun reflecting on it. Um, I think that would help. Bring some depth too, because if you don't have the, if you don't see the horizon, Feels a little closer, maybe a little more claustrophobic. Just a few things, but uh, yeah, that was good, man. Good job with the, like the, the colors and the skin, and mm, beautiful colors. That would make some delicious sushi. Mm. Mm. Lol, <clears throat> Luisa. What's up, Luisa? I'm unsure about the folds on the jeans and on the shirt as well. The guy is really buffed up, so I think my folds don't work. Although I keep in mind the tension points. I kept in mind. <clears throat> Ask away. If you have a question. Oh, quite. Oops. Did I miss? Skip something? Yeah, I did that. I started with that. So maybe maybe rewind a little bit. Um, that's what I was in the photo. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Right? Yeah, because I start I started to uh, I started by answering this first, and then I went into the into the painting. Louisa. <laughs> I think it works pretty well. I think it's more like the, the overall shading, but your folds are great on here. Yeah, that's really good. Um, like, yeah, so yeah, maybe just like overall shading like this side here could be a little darker. Like the front of his body. But, I mean... And maybe like some of these folds could go a little darker too. Um, that's like a common, common mistake that a lot of people do with, uh, with folds that they just don't go dark enough. But like some folds get real dark, you know, like look at my shirt here. I mean, it's a dark shirt, so maybe not the best example, but even in skin, you know, if I, if I go like this, like this gets pretty dark right here and my skin is, is quite white. So, you know, even the, the brightest, the, the, the whitest fabrics will, uh, when there's no light, there's no light. So when it's warranted here, like under the color, Maybe in between here, the chests, uh, the, the neck, and the color itself. So yeah, just going going dark enough when it when it needs it. So here, like where it, where it enters the pants, when it slide when it slides in, those folds would probably be a lot deeper, and probably not a whole lot of light will be able to escape. So. <clears throat> To me, that's the biggest issue. Like your folds, they're they're nice. They're really good looking. Very stack. Like here too, could go a little a little deeper there. That's a big fold. And same idea with her. 
that guy actually looks pretty good. Uh, maybe you have holds here, like for the, the biceps, you could maybe push that out a bit. Some rustling in the, <laughs> the feathers right there. Who's doing that? Bird's trying to sneak up on me. So those would be like fold coming from the, the chest, like part of the chest, and then going into uh, into the bicep. So kind of more like this. So again, like you, it contours where it can, you know, where it's easier. Like if you go like, uh, like you'll go in here, the fold will accumulate here rather than on top of the bicep, rather than on top of the shoulder. Whenever there's like a little dip, that's where the folds will kind of collect. For her, um, I mean, like maybe that ball here is strange. The rest is pretty good. But this makes it feel like she's got, yeah, like her. Could be the shoulder. It's not quite close enough to her head, like the shoulder, if that were the case, would probably be more like, more like here. Alright. If there were no, there were no clothes, and then her arm stick out from there. So, so yeah, maybe just adjusting again the fold so that it's most of them collect in there and uh, around those dark spots. Around the bicep here. Around the breasts, going into the pants. Most of these look pretty good, but uh, I would once again just like punch some of these out a bit more, the deeper. Here, like they're affecting the the volumes somewhat more. Than shoulders here get a lot of folds there too. Now she seems super buff, but. <laughs> Add a little shadow here. More like a fold, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And on top of the chest here, probably some more lights would accumulate. It's like a top of a shelf. More than on the stomach itself. Just like you have a little more here on top of the legs. Back legs too. But um, it's not so much a fault of the, the issues here. It's more like the the shade, like the... Yeah, just the values. Because your fault, especially with that guy, you're quite nice. And here, like the pants. Yeah, this is pretty believable. Figure two. Uh, jeans, you say? Maybe you could you could flatten that out. Like the, the the thigh would be pushing against the jeans, maybe a little bit more. Maybe like a little bit more tension that way. But I don't know. This looks pretty nice. Maybe here in the back of the leg, you know, we could have some more folds. Fabric kind of just collecting there. And then, yeah, maybe just a little bit less underneath, underneath here. But no, like the direction, like the logic is there though. So I don't know. I don't think, I don't think there's a whole lot to change here. Maybe, maybe like around the knees, but. 
my biggest challenge. I was never able to draw black, no, draw in black and white. It's, it's not finished, but I got the impression I'm not going in the right direction, so I stopped. To ask for feedback, what can I do to avoid the muddy look? I used a sub brush mostly and vary the intensity. I guess I should go from lighter whites and start drawing folds. Brown part of her shirt, yeah. So when drawing in black and white, you know, I would worry about that after. So I think it's easier to tackle everything as if it was all white, like there's no colors to anything. So like I know it's a little little challenging, maybe if you look at this, but maybe it worth be worth it to edit the the reference first, like brighten it up so that you can see the the folds properly, because that's the idea. We just want to look at the folds. We don't want to be bothered with, with colors and and uh, and values at this point. It's really just getting good folds, getting good shading for those folds. And after that, you know, you can easily just select a part. Like if I were to draw, if I were, if I want to to darken this part of the dress, you can easily do that after after the fact. All right. So now now it's darker fabric done. So try to abstract that out. Um, ignore the the actual color of the garments. And like darker gar darker fabric versus lighter fabric, try to ignore all of that stuff and add it later. And yeah, like the I think the the process here might might help if it were just a little cleaner. So if you um, if you had maybe like three different layers, so the base layer for the um like the overall the overall volumes the overall uh yeah the overall construction of the garments and then the second layer adds kind of like the medium sized details and then the third layer is all the finer details like the stuff here you know like around the uh, around the top all the seams like the little little details right there little folds this little little string on uh, the, the smaller folds in here that don't really impact much uh, we don't really notice them anyways when you look you, when you look quickly because right now I feel like the um, the the big shapes are not defined well enough and so that's why like it, they can't carry the medium sized details and the small size details as well like looking at this whole thing sleeve torso bottom of the dress. It's that kind of shading. This is darker on this side. This is bright on that side. It's darker down here. Darker down there. A little bit brighter here on top of the leg. And so like he would kind of start like this and then build on top of that. So then you go. You can add like the, the details, the medium sized details in here. And then even even uh, you know pop a new layer and then go even even smaller with your details. So I would build it up this way. Uh, it's also just a lot easier to troubleshoot your problems in this case because you know if you end up with a point at a point where you're like ah it's time to be a little too busy then you can always like hide the layer that's on top maybe the one that has a little too much detail or you raise like just partial details that you added later in the process. Um, because yeah, it's not so much like the your observation of the folds in here that's the issue. It's more like the the overall values. Like you would expect, you know, this area to be significantly darker. That side of the body, this side of the body to be significantly darker than the other, than the opposite side. But in your case, it isn't. You know, it's about the same. So that's the biggest issue right now. It really uh, makes those smaller folds harder to read. 
so big shapes I think that's big details I think that's the uh, the main issue here and I am for a career in concept art but I would like to be able to illustrate realistically my characters for this reason I know that little details count please let me know what I'm doing Yeah, little details count, but they they add little also. <laughs> they add little to the to the overall image. So I wouldn't personally focus on it too much. Uh, it's really the like that stuff that's more important. It's the main structure, the foundation on which all those details are built or added. And I know that her head is not tilted in the right direction. Right on. Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, you know, the position of the head really doesn't matter too much. It's a fold study after all. But yeah, just FYI, you know, you look at the direction of the eyes. So when you trace the sphere as like the construction of the head, you would want to place that, that, uh, that ellipse, you know, that goes around the head for the eyes in that same angle. front of the face, something like this, now something like this, and so it feels more like she's looking up rather than looking down. That helps. Moving on to Jad. Um, what's up Jad? I did have a great week, hope you did too. Um, I'm back to my comfort zone with semi-realistic portrait. I know there's still room for improvement, so I'd be glad to hear what I can push forward with this portrait. Nothing more to say. Right on. Let me just refresh here, see if Google deleted my image again. Stop it. There we go, it's still there. Great. Alright. I guess they were happy with that leak. Is meant to be the guardians, guardian of the towers. My character, cute, sad face. Yeah, definitely looks a little, a little sad. It's good. Um, uh, oh, that was nice. That's that guy combination of <coughs> excuse me combination of those two I think that the uh, uh -oh. I'm lagging a bit here um Yeah, your the details and the features, the, um, the shading overall uh, looks really, really good. Maybe just one thing before I go into the the main feedback, but uh, like maybe this part of the jaw feels like it's it's sticking out a little too much. You know, even in this case, like the, the difference in uh, in the values come like from here to the chin, for example. It's it, there is there is one for sure. So. What's closer appears a little lighter. Um, so maybe darken that just a bit. It'll make it feel like it's recessed a bit more. It's going a little further back. <clears throat> um, but yeah, overall, I think it's uh, maybe like the contrast is a little low. It makes it feel a lot flatter, I think, than it could. Contrast in the face mostly, like the rest of the, the outfit is fine. And also, if um, his face is this bright, you know, uh, most likely, and maybe like this is not a great example. Unless it's the same material, but this is more of a... Um, like a fuzzy type of material, so it absorbs a lot of the color, a lot of the, not the color, a lot of the light. 
if he's wearing something that's a little more rigid, you know, to maintain that kind of shape. It feels more like a... Uh, maybe more like leather or uh, just, yeah, just like a stiffer fabric. Then that would reflect light a bit more if it's not fuzzy. But she doesn't seem to be fuzzy, right? The, the line here is very, very sharp. I don't know, maybe that. And, uh, maybe maybe another reason why this works better is that the, this level of contrast is similar across the board here so it goes really dark it's like it goes really really dark under his eyebrows it goes really really dark you know in his nostrils in between his mouth his lips and in the ears in your case the value is a lot more subdued like a lot more a lot tighter and your range the value is a lot tighter but you still have the crazy contrast here so that stands out a little more so two options, I guess. Uh, okay, so yeah, if it's leather, then then probably you would have a little bit more reflection here. We'll catch a little bit more of the light, just because harder surfaces, easier for the light to bounce uh, bounce off of it. But it's kind of like a two-way street. So either you could you could brighten that up just a little bit, but also introduce maybe a more a little more contrast in the face overall. Um, because because there's low contrast, the face feels a little flatter. I don't think that's a problem with the neck. I think it's more more the face. I think that helps, but probably would have to be a little bit more detailed than that, like going into your shadows here, like under the eyebrows, and maybe like darkening that a bit. So that's similar to the shadow underneath his neck, or underneath his jaw, rather. Making that a little darker. Underneath his nose, maybe a little darker. Again, just so that the shadows are consistent in their values. If they're dark, this dark here, then they should, they should be pretty much the same darkness as uh, everywhere else. Mm. More contrast in the face. A little, a little more highlights here. And, 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 and. Um, maybe a little bit more of that, that red tint in the face. Like in your... <laughs> Perfect matches perfectly with the the, the tutorials that are, tutorial I released yesterday, class I released yesterday on YouTube, but uh, a little bit more warmth in the transition from light to shadow. So like I don't know, maybe like around here on the forehead, although the forehead that, that effect wouldn't be so intense here, but. Maybe that's too much, but uh, but warming up a little. Maybe it's just in the shadows that you that you could warm things up, because it gives him a little bit of an like an undead feel. There you go, Terminator. Because <laughs> uh, without it, it feels more undead. Or maybe not. Maybe you can just add it locally, like you know, like make the nose feel. A little redder, so that there's there's more blood in there. You can you just you want to feel the blood a little bit more in the face. Maybe it's in the ears. Uh, not white, obviously. Maybe it's a little redder here. It's just something to make him feel just more alive. Minor details, though. Um, mostly overall, mostly overall contrasts. Structurally, this is very nice. Awesome stuff. <clears throat> and Varia, what's up? 
really had way too much time with the, the monster assignments and all the other stuff this week. I was hoping to get some critique on the overall designs. I was especially struggling with the perspective a bit. Uh, also, I did some more portraits to practice head anatomy. What do you think about the proportions and noses? Uh, last time you told me the nose is a three object on its own and that really helped me. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at these. Yeah, it looks nice. Looks really good. Yeah, making the nose a little, a little darker. It just, it makes it stick out more. That looks really good. <clears throat> yeah, kind of a more graphic style, right? So you're not really shading too much here. It's more like a treatment of line arts in a way. So like if I wanted to be super critical, I'd be like, well, maybe you could have added shadows like this to make her face feel more 3D, but uh, I don't know. I kind of like it the way it is. It's very, like I said, very stylized look. It, it, it works. Almost like flat colors with, with accents of redness. Like in the cheeks. And all that. Maybe have the, um, just like a sphere, you know? Maybe have the, the highlights a little higher on on that sphere. Just because she's looking up. So it's almost like a, the highlight would come all the way to the halfway point if we were looking at her, you know, like straight ahead. So like the ball of her nose would have shadow down there, highlights up here, the light's coming from above. Uh, but since she's looking up a little bit, and that's going to curve up as a result to follow the perspective and so yeah maybe removing some of the highlights there and shifting them towards the top here of the nose looking up. Overall, it's really good. Mm. <clears throat> Maybe I'd recommend doing the same thing with the with the hair. So treating it as more of a like a big sphere, and then you add kind of the noise for the hair on top of it. And then down here, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of lights. So treating it more as like the, the, uh, yeah, the shadow parts of the sphere. Makes that, makes that hair feel more 3D. Right, let's, let's take a look at these little guys. <laughs> these came out awesome. Yeah, that one's, that one's really nice. Perspective works super well here. Very nice. This one too. It's just like eyes, you know, keep in mind eyes are 3D, you know, they're not flat. I mean, they could be flat if it's like a cartoon character. So 
when they're like this, maybe they would they would stick out. <laughs> be funny looking. Like the ones that are seen from the side here. <clears throat> maybe they're sticking out some more. Either way. Uh, yeah, I really like, um, so this one overall, I think it just doesn't feel as like as 3D as the other ones. So it's probably like my least favorite, but it's just that, it's just the, like the body here. There's nothing that indicates that it's like round. It feels more like it's just like a cutout, like 2D. If you want this a shadow. I know that this is not at all the point of the, point of the exercise, but you know, because the others have it. So if you have like maybe just a little bit more of that, a little bit more light information to make him feel like it's just rounder and she can grab him. Um, because these, these definitely do like this feels like a sphere, right? So highlight in the center, shadow on the outside. Same thing with this little guy here. Um, just to make this feel more appealing because right now it looks like a like a like an evil character just because he seems like he's, he just got out of like a trash trash can uh if you just warmed up your highlights a bit so we'll take the highlights here <coughs> excuse me um <coughs> take the highlights and then warm them up maybe a little lighter and a little more orangey i think it would make this guy feel a lot a lot friendlier maybe cleaner a little warmth instead of being all brown, like poopy brown. Instead now it's got, it's got some orange tints. Just just as interesting. So also yeah, that helps the area. Very cool stuff. Moving on to Cassandra. Hope you had a good week. Hope you did too. I continued working. Uh, <clears throat> on this illustration, I've applied your feedback from last week and added some colors and lights. I haven't started doing any details yet. At first, I wanted to see if the piece reads well from afar. Although, I am not satisfied with its current state. How can I emphasize the focal points, character plus wolf, and footprints more? <clears throat> I'd appreciate your help. With this and uh, if you notice anything else feel free to point it out all right all right, all right. Ooh, nice we got some colors in here That was cool. Um, maybe I'd recommend that you <clears throat> that you you push the value, like the the difference in values, some more. Because I like what you have already. It looks good. So, but maybe even more of that would be even more successful. Like uh, reducing the values in the back here, and like also shifting the colors. Humidity in the air, more fog. Maybe extra blue tints. So pushing the background and then pushing these, like the middle ground, some more. 
so there's more contrast uh, between the foreground and the middle ground. I think that's just the yeah the only area where contrast is a little a little too close for comfort. Same idea here. Do some of that contrast. Not some, not reduce contrast, but um, yeah, like chip away at at the the black colors a bit. perspective that that's kind of what this does um, and then and then have to emphasize the focal point so you can do that easily with lights lights light. so right now I'm, I darkened a little bit of the the foreground here but you could brighten that up and just locally like right here for examples Some of, maybe that bush is like blocking some of the lights, but uh, but it's like a little bit of a little bit of an in between here where you can reach. Through the branches. And then you can do the same thing back here in between or like behind that rock. Maybe some extra lights is able to reach there. Light's always, uh, always a secret weapon to help bring emphasis to, to different things. But uh, yeah, honestly, that's it. So a little bit of value tweak. Um, you could also, yeah, you probably haven't gotten to that point yet, but uh, like that arm feels good. Uh, maybe introduce a little bit of a gradient in the colors so that, again, like to, to remove that, that like tube-like uh, effect that we get a little bit here. So probably the entire arm wouldn't be receiving as much light throughout, like equal lights everywhere. So maybe a little less up here, where the you know where the wolf is kind of blocking the lights, and so the emphasis will be on the hand instead. This way it doesn't feel like it's it's a stick as much. Hmm. Something like that. Well, that helps. But looks really good. Love the colors that you have already. Oh, this is gonna be nice. <clears throat> Moving on to Luca. Mm -hmm. 
So, what's up, Luca? So I worked on a character for the tabletop RPG campaign I master for. I just started doing clothing folds and shading on the first version, but any correction or criticism on pose anatomy and color choice will be welcome. Um, <clears throat> the left is supposed to be. <clears throat> the left is supposed to be hurt with the style of her original samurai clan, um, which reminds. Which reminds skies and cloud, which reminds sky and clouds of the color palette. Some red to represent her personality. The right uh, one is her after she joins another clan. Viper themed. I went for forest and turned color, but uh, put her some more red makeup and tried to and try my best with a free brush. Had to make her sword look like a snake skin. Right. Um, what's the other one? Da, 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 da. All right, all right, all right. Mm. Looks good. Looks really good. Awesome stuff with the uh, like very nice use of the reference. Those folds pretty, pretty believable. Uh, colors look great too. Maybe like a little too much saturation in your reds. Um, feels, feels like a uh, very exciting to look at, but maybe too much. Um, so yeah, just like desaturating this a bit. It's not a leading color. Don't don't saturate things too much. You can keep it more saturated here on the shoulder, maybe. So that's a uh, you bring the attention closer to the focal point, but keep it keep it toned down for, for everything else. Saturation just attracts a lot of attention. And then, yeah, maybe introducing a little bit of a gradient towards the top here. Could be a little lighter, lighter than the top, uh, lighter than the bottom. Again, kind of naturally guiding the eyes towards the focal point. So anatomy, proportions, all of that stuff looks really nice. I don't think there's going to be much there. Uh, the folds look good too. Like maybe the only thing that looks a bit weird is like this here. Like this feels like it's kind of like sticking out. I know that's what it looks like here. Uh, but I love that. It's kind of just, it's like a big circle that's laying on top of some more fabric. Like we can, you can feel it, but maybe more. And like the angle here is not as, as intense as yours. So I think if you just maybe open that up a bit, let go. It's a minor detail. It's just something that's bugging me. It feels, it feels too pointy. Mm. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, I like the first one a lot, especially with the red here. And if you like, once you adjust the saturation for the reds, maybe you might want to have something red like around the face too, because the red again takes away from the focal point a lot. Like here, what makes the focal point work is that her face is the only thing that's white, right? Everything is red. The 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 face is white, and so it stands out. Um, in your case. The face is kind of lost in the sea of white and doesn't stand out as much for that reason. But I mean, one way, one easy way would be to just have red hair. That would solve it, kind of. Uh, uh, but don't want to do that. Could have maybe like that string here. Could be red, like a very saturated red. Um, maybe she's got I don't know, or he, she. I say, I say, she, I say she, but maybe it's a he. Maybe he's got some. Uh, I don't know, like red tattoos, like, I don't know, whatever. Uh, but there's maybe some some hair accessories or something like that. Maybe it's just like the trim of this shirt here that has a little bit of red on the outside, perhaps. 
just happens to be very nice and vivid red. And as you get away from that, less and less vivid. Um, just something to, to highlight the focal point, just to make that stand out some more. Could be the color of the eyes too, you know, if he, she, had a little bit more color in here. That would help also bring the attention to it. Mm. Probably a probably a woman, right? <laughs> That's lipstick. Yeah, so I mean she could have that too, maybe a little little blush on the a little red here, maybe on the nose, maybe on the lips. Looks like a clown now, but uh, but carrying that red around the face I think would be important. Um, 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 and then here, <clears throat> similar similar thing for the these too saturated, so tone that down. That's that attracts too much attention. Uh, yeah, gradients here would would do would work wonders as well. So if it's you know if you have this color and it goes a little lighter towards the top, I think that'd be real nice. Same thing here, maybe it warms up the color too. The green gets a little greener, a little more yellower towards the top. Like all of that kind of just helping to guide the eye towards the focal point. Same thing with this. Yeah, I think accessories around the face would help uh, in both cases. This one, for sure, because there's more white here, so you just have to Put even more emphasis around the face uh, to help it stand out. And here, it's the only thing that's white, you know, so already it works pretty well. But um, but just for design purposes, maybe carrying that red here, which is a, a more unusual color in your color palette, maybe carrying that red elsewhere as well. Make it seem like it's a deliberate choice. And red on green usually looks pretty good. Yeah, so it's mostly colors. Otherwise, very nice. Nice stuff. <clears throat> Paranoid now. Did they delete again? been a while and i hope you're well so these are some of my latest works again stylized to my own style after spending time with anatomy studies little bit could you uh, blah, blah, blah. could you please review them and uh <clears throat> and give your input honestly hit a professional polish also have a few questions um the first picture to the top left was painted with a more traditional color style but all these values were done with colors and no grayscale <clears throat> well, so the idea of using gradient maps and uh, kind of layering everything else uh, in like clear steps, you know, so lines and then shading and then colors and then lights, and blah blah. Um, so that you can spot your own weaknesses and work on those in isolation. Mm. 
Also, it allows you a lot more flexibility. Let's say you want to tweak just the colors. You know, if you're happy with your shading, if you're happy with everything else, <clears throat> and the only thing that you're not sure of are the colors, then you can easily tweak that. It's on their, it's on their own layers. You just have to change, you know, play around with the, the control balance or control hue, or just play around with the shaders for your, um, not the shaders, but the sliders for your gradient maps. It also allows you to, to test things out a lot easier, a lot faster. And yeah, just like a just like a recipe, you know, for uh, let's say you're learning to to bake chocolate cake, <clears throat> you're probably not going to look at a recipe for the first time and be like, ah, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna remove maybe let's let's cut the flour in half. Let's triple the sugar, maybe quadruple the butter, and you know expect to have a good result in the end. Probably not gonna work out. So you know, just like just like with cooking, you need to to learn recipes, and then once you learn them well, once you know how every ingredients, how every part of the recipe affects the end results, then you can start to modify those. <clears throat> that's the that's the that's the idea. Um, so I would highly recommend it. So do these hit a professional polish level? Not really, but uh, again, like if you had the different steps, it'd be easier to spot why that is for you, for yourself, it'd be easier. Um, and here, you know, let's take a look at this one, for example. Uh, the, you know, style aside, the, the anatomy is not quite as accurate as it should be. Um, so like how these, how these big things are. <laughs> Is, uh, her her flotation device is attached to the body is a little off it just in terms of the the real anatomy so it doesn't attach this high but have definitely more of a um, let's say that's the torso shoulders clavicle uh, no it'll be a lot a lot more lower in the body and attach kind of like that so you have more of a more of that kind of slope here and even if they're implants you know it would still be a slope there because the, the top of the chest here doesn't have anything now that's just the muscles and then the breast will be lower and so that's going to be flat and then the breast will become uh, will be will start um but yeah naturally speaking that'll be more of a like a softer slope but still the slope after kind of be just a period of nothing there's nothing that's attached up here that's just the muscles so yeah the shading here is a little, little concerning uh, and then the way that the arm you know kind of connects with the body and then it's, it's always better to to start from something that's realistic and then tweak that to something that's that's more stylized then go into your your style, you know, directly, because the style really is just taking, you know, the example of a of a culinary student again. <clears throat> it's as if, uh, yeah, you just you kind of just you started, you know, you, you have maybe a little bit of experience. You're playing around with your uh, with your with your ingredients, and then you know you're supposed to do like a certain recipe, and then you end up having like personal ingredients that you that you add on top and like really customizing the recipe without having a really really good grasp on it first yeah there's like a a, a a missing link in between here and so yeah if your anatomy was a little better uh, i think you could deliver that much much easier and um so that's what i would recommend uh, that's what i would recommend that you focus on just better anatomy more anatomy studies because clearly the character is all what you're drawing there's <laughs> no problem there that's what i used to do too but uh, if the character is a feature then you want to make sure that that feature is really solid it's technically good uh, regardless if you have if you want to if, if you want to slap on a heavy style on it or not so anatomy studies do more of those there we go as a nice segue here 
to to the next question. Um, so when doing anatomy studies, I sometimes don't fully understand how to look, observe them. Like, what are the things that I should focus on? Because, uh, because it feels like I'm shifting between focus and aesthetic. Right? Yeah. So, let's say you have a, let's just pull one at random. Uh, help. Boom. First one I find, there it goes. Let's just use that. So, how to study from this? Well, First, you want to be able to observe the, the main volumes that, that make up this structure here, this complex structure. So you're going to have like a sphere here for the, for the shoulder, a ball here for the shoulder, a ball for your torso, uh, cylinder for your neck, structure of the face, you know, typical here, but a different line for the different features where they, sh where they should land. Here the, the, the upper arm that's just a cylinder, ball for the elbow, another cylinder for the lower arm here, in the right angle, hands not as important, um, and then here we have the structure for the leg, it's going to be another cylinder going that way. So you got to first be able to identify those on the photo itself, and after that um, you can move on to just drawing that again. but to the side, so as more of a more of a study, less of a, just like an analysis of the the image. So now you would do that again. All right, start with the head, head tilted in that direction. Then you have the neck, shoulder, torso like that. And then you connect the legs, the right angle, and kind of just recreating the same thing, but from scratch, like next to it. And then once you have a good mannequin, once you have a good construction, then um, you move on to details. So looking at the anatomy a little bit more carefully because up to this point you know there's no anatomy whatsoever like who cares what the shoulder actually looks like actually looks like who cares about the biceps who cares about the triceps it doesn't matter <clears throat> but after you're done with that then you can start to add the details like close up those shapes here all right so the stomach there include starts like this and you have the back and then you can look at like the different different highlights here on the body so tricep right there and then, uh, yeah, that's kind of the process. So start with the uh, start with just basic analysis of what you're looking at, so that you can really observe, really focus on observing what you're what you're about to draw. Then draw it from reference using the construction, and then go beyond just the construction and add details on top. end of the chapter on animal and creature drawings. I first tried to find skeleton and muscles in pictures, but I didn't have much fun. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so I quickly moved on to the drawing. So I first made the goat with the reference, and then the frog by imagining after seeing the course. Can you tell me the mistakes I made? I asked some friends. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, to give me pairs of animals to make mixes out of and I don't know why but I feel like it doesn't look good is it because the choice of animals is not right or because I made bad design choices let's find out All right. mm, that was good <clears throat> yeah just um be careful with the uh the, the upper arm, or in this case, the forearm. The forearm? No, 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 the... Uh... Yeah, the forearm. <laughs> These here. So they're just a little beefier. All right, so you can kind of easily tell their their outline there. Kind of slapped on the side of the body. It's like two, two big, two long sausages and two, two, two big ellipses. 
I think that's the only like structural parts that's a little off. Making those a little bigger. Yeah, those are going to be that's gonna be the forearm here. So all these these muscles, all the flexor muscles. Or in this case, you know, that'd be more the extensor muscles. Or rather. Where's that doggy from? Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good too. That's just like uh, you know, the <coughs> excuse me, the upper arm of qu of uh, quadruped is always going to be a lot more massive than the the forearm. The forearm always looks like a, like a tiny thing. Like you know, that's the forearm. Then what's the upper arm? It's this big thing. <laughs> That's the shoulder right there. So shoulder and triceps included and back here. So it's really big, thick, and in comparison the forearm. It's kind of just this wimpy little thing. So same thing with dogs. Um So we're gonna have like the elbow somewhere around here. And up until that point, I know there's not a whole lot of mass here, so it's gonna be pretty skinny. But this here is going to be a lot, a lot, a lot thicker. That's where most of the mass is going to be, instead of being kind of this, this nice, this nice gentle slope. It's uh, thick, it's thick and skinny. Looks good, otherwise. Pretty damn good. All these studies here oh yes very nice and you can see it again right here you know like that's tricep shoulder big and thick and then it's skinny for skinny forearm <laughs> the hell never seen this animal Four horns, crazy, crazy looking. Looks fake. So what the cat mix with, with whatever the heck this is. Like what's cool when he makes animals? I don't think this kind of works, you know. I don't. <laughs> that one's a little wilder, but but that one kind of works. Good proportions. Uh, you know the horns are not so big that it feels like he would like topple over. Uh, it seems like just good balance. Colors are nice. Nice shading. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like this one quite a bit. change much here maybe maybe just introducing a little bit more hit this guy's features because right now it's it's a lot of a lot of cats you know with cats with like longer hair but maybe he's got like really long hair because that's yeah. uh -oh. maybe more here feels like fluffier more like a sheep Looks good. And <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> hmm. That one looks a little more a little more weird. Um <laughs> So that one's that one's trickier, and that one is, yeah, maybe that mix not the best. 
I mean, you could probably, could probably adjust this to, to make it work, but it's just like it's you're working off of a, you know, like a, a, a creature that has an outer shell, like the an exoskeleton, and the flesh inside, versus a bird that's more like us, uh, where the skeleton's on the inside and the flesh's on the outside. So uh, already it's like you have two different systems entirely working together here. So it's kind of weird to have a skeleton and then an exoskeleton on top. Like you wouldn't be able to move at all. But uh, how could you make that work? <clears throat> like you could treat this uh, and like take the shape, for example, and maybe treat it more as a like a, as a skin growth. You know, like some birds have that, like it's like a uh, like a turkey, for example. You know, like like flappy flappy chin that kind of stuff like stuff on the head that's kind of flappy it looks like a cancer yeah maybe you know maybe you could go uh, and go that route like maybe around the beak you know where this maybe that would make more sense like maybe part of the beak is that and like around the face here like on top of the head more like a, like an armor almost Similar to, I guess, what you what you went for here, but maybe less less symmetrical. Like it feels more like somebody like put these on there. Where else could that be? Hmm. Yeah, like maybe some something hanging here. Or, or maybe like all around the neck here, like the the neck of the bird is all armored and then it switches, like it slowly transitions to uh, to feathers. I think it's just like having it a little bit of everything, like everywhere, like a little bit of armor here, feathers here, armor here, feathers, feathers there. That doesn't work as well. Um, but yeah, maybe if it was like all located up here, like all of that, is like maybe not like a hard shell, but like the same color, same same texture maybe, but like a softer material some leathery skin like a rhino you know? and then you could have like the different sections here to make it extra weird and then after that like the, the feathers kind of take over and the rest is just feathers maybe that would that might work better but uh <laughs> but, yeah, but this one looks nice that, that really works nice stuff Oh, that helps. Moving on to Sam. <clears throat> we'll be due for another break after this. Oops. I feel like I need to change my, my thumbnail again. Don't think the changes was enough. Damn YouTube. Uh, all right, so I hope you're also well. Sam, thank you. Um, so I've moved and I'm still unpacking, so I've not got much to show aside from my finished piece from two weeks ago. I'm going to continue this portrait challenge by next week with another art piece. Hell yeah. Nice colors in here. Very, um, <clears throat> very in your face, but it's, like I like that you went dark enough, you know, in your in your shadows here. Like it just it makes the makes the volumes work, even though the lighting is crazy. Like super bright, super bright, super saturated on both sides. Maybe it's just one thing that's a little strange, like the uh, the, the 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 magenta on this side. You know, like I can totally see it as being like a light source that's that's coming from like behind the guy or the girl, <laughs> whatever whatever this character is, <laughs> could kind of be both. Um, so it could be coming from this side, but, but strange that it's also seen from this angle. 
and not on the nose, for example. You know, like you have it here, but not on the side of the nose. So yeah, I think I'll just get rid of that. Just keep that side blue. One's the blue side, the other one's the pink side. Boom. That'll probably make a little more sense. Um, Have a good night, Sukena. Thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah. um, but yeah, the nose, I think, is the biggest issue here. So the nose is just not getting any of that light, you know? Like the, this here, side of the lip is getting a lot of light. But then what about the nose here? That should be catching quite a bit. Unless it's got a tiny, teeny, teeny nose. So wherever the light is coming from, coming from this side or slightly from the front doesn't matter but that nose should be much brighter <laughs> so Ryan yeah and just like under the lip here go pretty dark same thing here under the nose go dark dark room for the nostril there you go beautiful boy or girl whatever you are it doesn't matter Probably similar idea with the rest of the hair. So uh, just making making the hair feel more like like volume, you know, instead of uh, instead of beings that don't respect the laws of physics. So like right here, that looks pretty good. We got some highlights on the outside, and you got some you know some some darker shadows on the inside. That's nice. Kind of don't get that everywhere uh, anywhere else though. Like in here. Maybe I should do some some more clear locks up here. Cause it gets a little fuzzy down there. What's happening here? Yeah, I think it's just like more order in the hair. And that'll help. Side of heads and uh, I guess call it something like this. Maybe just, yeah, maybe kind of just adjusting the fuzziness. Into this because that's it. Just looks like the hair, the head kind of continues, but it'd be just because of where the hair's position, but like the skull doesn't. And we can see like the side of the neck there, so you can kind of imagine that the skull goes this way. So yeah, just adjusting like where this, all of this stuff here attaches. Maybe it's, maybe it's closer here. Uh, yeah, just a little more order in the hair. I think, uh, I think it'd be nice. And be careful of tangents. So this comes uncomfortably close to the edge. Like, hi, ah, oops, never mind. I would play it safe. And adjust that curve there, so it's no doubts. It's not at all what you're trying to do. No intentions to bamboozle people with with weird tangents. So a little bit of shading in the hair. Um, just a little tighter with your light sources all around. Sort out like the the, the chaos in the hair, maybe. Maybe uh, get a little less hair. Um, 
I'll at least start with a little bit less and then like add on top, but like in an orderly fashion instead of trying to make sense of all that's there already. So like my approach would be to probably get rid of most of it, get rid of all that. All that here. That side, maybe not. But yeah, I'll try to figure out, all right, from here, how do we make that work? What's the body of the hair? What does it do when it's just, go back there this does she have it like on the side there or does he have it on the side um, or is it everywhere like a Medusa so yeah just making more sense with the haircut I think it's gonna help because um because we're kind of used, you know, to seeing typical haircuts, like what works, what doesn't work. And yours seems like it's a little too chaotic, like too much hairspray <laughs> or too much wind. Uh, so just trying to order the chaos just a bit. Yeah. Um, so, Emilio, we'll uh, resume with you after the short break. So, I'll be back in a few minutes. Let's pause for now, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes again, and I'll be RB. All right, what's up Emilio? So hope you're doing well. Yes, sir, hope you are as well. Today I wanted to bro, uh, today I wanted to bro you, to bother you with some composition to bother. Bother? I wanted to interest you with some composition to- oh wait, no, that makes no sense. Um, so composition, composition, composition tips because I just don't get it. So I made the piece below, but I'm not sure what the best way to frame it is, or if it's fundamentally wrong for some reason. I'm wondering how exactly do you go about it? Are there any rules that you stick to, or what's your thought process behind figuring out the cover piece? Uh, of course. Have you seen the composition? Class, there are some rules. So I try some different options here. Also, uh, this is my warning mark, so no more weeklies for me. Only monthly now. I'm not mistaken. That's right, man. A year ready. Let's see then. Um, all right, so we got some guy here that got. Woo! He got wrecked pretty good. Man, that was nice. Nice figure, nice anatomy, nice folds, nice outfit. Hell yeah. That's really good. All right, so we got some different uh, differences here in the, in the horizon. So uh, let's just go through a process of elimination. I think that's, that's going to be easier. So this one here, when you have like the, the horizon right next to the edge of the canvas, don't do that. It's like, uh, it's like anything, you know, let's say you have like a circle and then it just, it's just hugs touches the, the side of the canvas mm -mm. don't do that it's, it doesn't that doesn't look good it's too too big of a coincidence <clears throat> always give it some some space enough space like that's that's a little better but the fact that the horizon lands like right next to or right on the guys like uh, right on top of his head another one of those where you're like uh, if you can like avoid things lining up so perfectly for no real good reason, that's even better. <laughs> so for that horizon to work better, for example, you could just slide it down, have it go straight through the head. That would be, that'd be pretty good. Now he's got enough enough room up top here, and then uh, there's not gonna be any weird tensions going on. So that could work, although that's pretty crazy of a fish eye, a uh, fish, yeah, fish eye effect. And then he's not that distorted, so maybe not the best kind of perspective for that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> for this particular scene so this one here better but again you know like the head lens right on it yeah maybe a little lower would work better but in all of these uh, you only have a background and a middle ground where he is. He's in the middle ground. 
Now, the last one here, you introduce some, some foreground elements, like something like this that's in the foreground, overlapping part of this uh, part of this dude. That adds a lot more depth. That's a lot more interesting. So number four is a clear winner, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, here, I mean, you could still probably like lower the horizon just a little bit. So it doesn't land right on his head but <clears throat> depending on how fuzzy your horizon might be in that case you know, it might not be that big of a deal so if it's like a clear-cut horizon let's say it's like the ocean right so the ocean straight line and then the clouds or the sky uh in that case you would definitely want to avoid having it just just, ba just basically just touch the head uh, but if it's more fuzzy like if it's like a like a mist not mist but like a, a fog and foggy environment the horizon is a little bit more blurry then that's fine and then it would also be fine here and here and you know. so two options here maybe you can just uh have that go down a bit more like just a little cliff here a little hill go in and then stick out on the other side but behind his head <laughs> might look a little fake like this like he did this on purpose but whatever it still works better. <clears throat> yeah, that one looks it's pretty good. Nothing weird going on. No like weird line of action directing the, the direction uh, directing the attention away. Uh, you get to play with the values a little bit more this way too, right? So we have slightly darker values, more contrast in the foreground, and less and then less farther back you go yeah and like having these clear things that kind of overlap the rest where you can, you can clearly see that overlap i think that's nice yeah fisheye effect is pretty pretty hard like you would need to probably curve that leg a bit and it's just you definitely need it definitely needs a reference like you need to take a shot with that lens and then kind of study from that. It's hard to hard to imagine, hard to construct. Mm. Yeah, no, that one's that one's fine because it, it crosses it clearly. You know, if it were just like if the heel was right there, then I'd be like, yeah, no. But uh, but this one you can clearly imagine that it goes at least this way. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. That one does. That one's too close. But yeah, that's that's good. I like this a lot, dude. Number four. <laughs> it's just that man, he's having a rough day. <laughs> just looking at what am I gonna do about all this? Am I gonna die? Sure seems that way. Yeah, that one's the winner. You got more more depth more more uh, layers to your um to your perspective more grounds like more planes in your in your <clears throat> oh it just revived yeah i'd be I'd, <laughs> especially with the head i'd be i'd be surprised that i'm still alive <laughs> yeah dude i like this a lot so a ton of potential here with the cool, cool colors cool Hmm, that's gonna be nice. I believe in you. Elijah. Uh, Alright, so what you got here? So, life has been treating me alright. Thank you. Um, And of course, no worries. So life's been pretty crazy. Got engaged. Awesome, dude. Congrats. <laughs> that's a big deal. Uh, then went to California on a vacation. Then my cart kind of broke down, so I was just dealing with a lot of things. Alright, well, so... <laughs> big up and down there uh however well i did not have much time to draw digitally i was still sketching basically every day still awesome my man anyways here are my first attempts at uh one of the clothing assignments i realized just how hard shading clothes is so please tell me what uh where it looks good and where it needs to be what needs to be fixed as well as how to make them look better right on and yeah 
big congrats on that. That's a big one. What have you done? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm married. Uh, <clears throat> that's your study? Wait a minute. Why am I not? Just, that's not just like a photo edit. Those are good, dude. Look at those folds, man. Those pants look real. What the hell? A little too dark for my taste, though. I can't see. Can't see. Do do it. Uh, let's see. I mean, the reference is as dark, so can't blame you there. But, 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 just for my own feedbacky purposes, uh. Brighter so that I can see all done, all them deeds. Ooh, there we go. Oh, hell yeah, you don't need help with that. You got this. Yeah, those pants turned out awesome. Uh, yeah, that overall, that's really good too. Uh, I'd say maybe, maybe we don't feel like the bagginess uh, of the, 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 the coats. As much like he's got a lot more like a lot more mass down here like these lines here you know they go oops these these holes they go kind of straight down a little bit of a, <coughs> a little bit of fake tension but mostly just gravity and also he, I mean, he's pushing against it by having his hand in his pockets um, so maybe a little, a little bit more of that a little straighter down a little more baggy more mass in here but uh, yeah, no, I mean, overall, it's still it's really, really good. Yeah, maybe just these these folds here, like the ones going from the shoulder into like into the, 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 the lower part of the coat. Maybe those are aren't as obvious in yours in your study. He's got a bunch. Adding a few of these. It's pretty good here, but maybe giving them a little bit more volume. Stick out. Just so I feel that there's extra tension at the bottom, uh, at the top, and less towards the bottom. I don't know, Ryan. Have a good night, dude. Thanks for swinging. <laughs> Thanks for swimming. Thanks for swinging by. Yeah, and then maybe the values, maybe the values could be a little, uh, a little uh, more defined, like brighter up here, brighter up here, slightly darker down there. Like already, this mix. This looks cool. And the top of the shoulder here, a little bit more light. Top of the chest here, a little bit more light than you have down there. You know, it's the same green, but this one is definitely brighter. This is helping define kind of like the overall volume. Other than that, so your medium size, uh, like small folds. Medium, medium and small fold game. It's pretty tight. Dude, <clears throat> so a few months ago, my one year came to an end, so being a little late here, I'd like to share my last works, including previous ones, where your feedback really helped a lot. Hell yeah. I already showed them before, but then post final results. So on the left, here's my last work, and I would like, I would really appreciate your opinion on that one. Show no mercy. <clears throat> and can you please also take a look at previous works? Easy one. 
it's uh, the values. The values make this thing very confusing. Um, like I thought for some reason, like real quick, like my first impression, it was that all of these these buildings, obviously, uh, I thought these were more like small lanterns that were on this shelf. And it's just because of the values. Like they share similar values <clears throat> to them with the characters. The character, uh, not not singular, not plural. Um, so right, so it goes it goes pretty dark, it goes pretty bright. They they share the same thing. It goes really dark, it goes pretty bright. And so for them, uh, for those buildings, I think uh, to make them feel like more uh, like they're receding in the background, I think you just need to, to clamp your darker values, reduce those. And the same kind of goes with the mountains, very saturated. Uh, usually with distance, you lose a lot of that saturation. Everything things, everything tends to go to uh, white uh, or blue, you know, if it's, if it's the sky, but if it's sunny, <coughs> but usually it just tends to go to white as there's just particle in the air that just kills the saturation. So in here, let's try to do this like out of the hole, control L. Get rid of some of those darker values. And then we can tint that maybe a little bit. Uh, blue. So it's probably too much, right? So I'm probably adding too much. And I'm applying this equally everywhere. Probably not the best way. So like this one here. Actually, it's... Uh, just this maybe. This building here is a little closer. So it could be a little bit, uh, it could have a little more contrast. Actually, those those three in the front. Perfect selection. As you go back, wait a minute. And then your mountains in the far distance. Just removing some of the contrasts. Probably the buildings could still be adjusted a little bit, but, uh, but anyways, like from here, now on top of that, you can add some air, like to help define the different planes. Kind of what you did here at the bottom. That's a nice touch. Maybe a little more dot. The front here, and then in between themselves, some more. Like that's way too much, obviously. But, but pushing back this environment, so it needs a lot more, a lot more careful attention than. Uh, a lot more careful tweaking than what I did here, but I think it would help to push all of that back, uh, adjust the colors at the same time, and kind of have this gradual loss of contrast. Otherwise, it would feel too close. And then, yeah, let's take a look at the rest here. That turned out great. I don't think I've ever seen this one finished. Nice. This one, like color-wise, maybe not focused enough. Like, uh, you know, like the the intensity of the red. It's the same here. It's very intense here, almost like pure, pure red. And same idea up here. So you, just like with everything, um, you try to, just like any type of contrast, I mean, you can, uh, you, you should always try to aim for maximum contrast around the focal point and then less and less as you get away from that. So this kind of applies to, I mean, to all of this. This one, this one's pretty successful. The majority of the contrast is right here. And it's the only one with blue anyway, so it stands out real well. 
And here, the only thing with this one is that the back, you know, the backgrounds. It's good because there's a lot of it, so it doesn't feel too unique. But it, it does steal a little bit of attention away from the characters. So maybe, you know, if you saturated that a bit, a bit more, it's not too saturated. And introduce maybe more saturation in the character's skin. Maybe a little bit more. Some more red, a little bit. So yeah, just more saturation overall. Nani. Did I not select anything? Gold on his shoulder was a little bit more intense. Just, uh, just the I mean, that's overall doesn't doesn't work. Again, you have to do it more carefully than that. But <clears throat> but the characters feel very desaturated. The background feels very saturated, so it's more like like it's trying to shift that a little bit. Bring the saturation forwards. Desaturate the background a bit more. Like overall, if you apply that to your painting, I think it's uh, I think you'd be all set. I'm just doing it on these real quick. Saturate the red. It'll still read as red. But the one found on the boots won't attract as much attention. Now suddenly it feels like there's more light up here just by changing the changing the, the, the red a little bit. You could do the same with the rest, same you know with the shirt, the pants. Probably reducing a little bit of the saturation here because it's very saturated again. Just try to keep that saturation, those more intense colors, more vivid colors for your focal points. Other than that. That's nice. Very nice work. <clears throat> Super cool to see. Um, moving on, so Jared here. Uh, so what's up, Jared? I have no submissions for this week as I'm still powering through Perspective 2, but I wanted to ask a couple questions about the lecture. Now, the first question revolves around station points. When studying a city, for example, and you find a perspective for one building, but notice another building looks visually more rotated um, and that second building within the first building. <clears throat> I have to read that again. Um, that second building within the first building station point. Is that building within the first building station point? Or do other buildings tend to have their own vanishing points? Yes. So yes to the answer. It's uh, they each have their own. And lastly for the three perspective uh, demo. So that's why I can that's why you know I don't focus too much on that in the uh, in the class. Um everything points in the same direction. All the all the structures are going towards the vanishing points, so it's just a lot easier to um to construct this way. And uh, sure, like you can rotate stuff, but that changes their their, their focal point. They become um, almost like secondary. It's almost like a new drawing all of a sudden because that whole structure will be built around different sets of rules than uh, than the rest. I mean, it will be similar, but uh, like for example, if you had like three point perspective, the top one here, the top point will remain the same way. I would remain the same, but the other two vanishing points, those would change. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to be honest, I don't know anybody that, that actually draws these, you know, like calculates different uh, different rotation for buildings. Instead, um, what's important here is to just get a good understanding for how the vanishing points work, depending on how many you have, uh, what looks right, what doesn't look right, and, and kind of just simple perspective that works. And then from there, you know, when you, when you would do this, uh, and like for like a, a big piece, for example, let's say you're like yeah, you're building a city, um, or let's say you're working at a studio, you wouldn't be drawing it. You know, you'd be using 3D, put a bunch of blocks in space, uh, like in Blender or or ZBrush or SketchUp, whatever, um, and then take a screenshot of that and just draw over it. So that's, that's what that's what most people do. 
but uh, but i know like the the first perspective class there's there's some uh some extra stuff that i want to mention here like how to how to more easily rotate objects uh it needs some work and i've been i've been uh i've started to re uh, to re-record part of it so I'm, i want to go through the whole thing obviously <coughs> so um yeah that that's the the next one on the chapman block so hopefully it'll make more sense then um but just know it's not that big not super important um to know i know the stairs that you made didn't follow any of the three vanishing points you established so i wanted to ask if you intuitively placed another vanishing point yeah no it actually follows it actually follows it it's just uh you have to imagine so let's say we can we can draw that real quick here I like for this one so the stairs right now yes the, ter the stairs go up but i didn't really calculate that i don't really care where they go um all i did is consider different blocks and uh all of this still goes to that vanishing point so let's say you know you're walking up the path here boop, 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 and then you and then there's a path that goes towards the horizon then that would be that would be it right so you'd be walking doo, 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 towards the horizon it's just that we're below we're lower so we see it like it's above and it's going down but in fact he's above ground it's just it's just our point of view that's bamboozling us uh yeah the best way to look at this right um let's say like this is this would be like the top of a box that's standing on the horizon i think that's the best way to explain it so you could have that entire entrance gonna continue all the way to the ground you know if needs be and then that could be the entrance something like that and so we could just walk through it and then walk to the horizon in my case i have just something that's that stands in front of that and that's just like a box so starting from this point here the block kind of continues and then it reaches all the way up here that's the container box for that particular stairs So instead of going straight to the horizon, there's just like a little hurdle, hurdle to, to go over first, and then you can keep going to the horizon. So it still follows the same vanishing points, still follows the same everything. Um, it's just that now I have kind of like this, these corners that are slightly lower than the horizon because the, the block is coming towards us, just like the stairs here, you can see the top of it. Uh, these corners are below the horizon. And... Uh, all you have to do now would be to like trace a point from here to these corners and then to the other corners of that box kind of like slashing that that whole box you know like let's say this is a box like this you're chopping it in half this way and then this is where the stairs are going to be and that point here is that point right there and that point up here at the top of the stairs that's the point right here and so it just from one corner to the other slash slash that's the stairs in my case like the opening is slightly different and uh, maybe did i make a mistake i will have to go look at that <laughs> again uh, i just did it quickly now but not necessarily but I mean, this, it would still work here. It would just not be like a straight line to it. Yeah, I should probably correct that. Because that's confusing. It's not wrong, it's just it's just confusing for no reason. But anyways, that's the process, right? So you just draw like a big box. And then the top of the box is going to be your new floor. And then that floor still follows the same perspective. It still goes to the vanishing point. And uh, the bottom of the box, the bottom, you know, that's... That plane here that we can't see because it's landing right on top of the horizon. Uh, that little bit here that we can see maybe. That's the new, the new floor, and then you just have to chop that in half to make the connection between the two. Hand stairs. Done deal. I don't know if this explains it, but uh, but hopefully. That's something else to add to, to the list of things to to double check when I when I re-record this thing. Yeah. 
Or maybe I'm just crazy and I'm just like on the spot right now and like, there's something that I'm missing. Maybe nah. Yeah, there's something wrong. Something wrong. Not wrong, but something strange with the behavior. Like it's not all nice, nice clean cut. So I'll need to, I'll need to double check here. But anyway, yeah, like I said, hope that helps, uh, Jared. Moving on to uh, Joe. Um, did some more modeling. Oh, now it feels cold. Ooh, that's nice. Went from sweating to being cold. Typical California. Um, so did some modeling, some more modeling for this mech to make the drawing easier, and I took some of your suggestions with uh, adding some kind of power source at a nuclear core. <laughs> a little overkill for the little droid, but I like it. Just curious if you think there's a better, if you think this is a better direction. Also, <clears throat> wondering, uh, wondering if uh, using current play wrenches is a bad idea, and if so, what I could do a more futuristic tool. Ooh, bad idea, I don't know, it's a bad idea, but definitely brings it brings it more to the present, that's for sure. So maybe if you had I, I don't I don't know that the tools are gonna to be that different, you know <laughs> in uh in the future. If bolts exist and you need something to to screw them. Um So yeah, so as I was saying, uh I don't know how futuristic you can make a hammer <laughs> or a screwdriver uh, or a wrench, but um, at least you could maybe make them feel more like cyberpunk, punkish. You know, like uh, maybe they're just or like at least custom looking. So I don't know. Maybe some of it has like a, you know, some straps here, like some dirty strap all around it, like some tape. To, uh, to, to get a better grip. Uh, maybe maybe make some of them bigger. Like they feel they feel pretty small, pretty flimsy. So maybe if they were thicker, like uh, in that in that way. So steering away from uh, from realism in that sense by making them a little a little more not cartoony, but yeah, just a little bulkier. <laughs> Neons to the hammer. <laughs> like a fan on the hammer a power supply on the hammer uh, so yeah make them custom a little more custom I think that's, that's gonna work better maybe they have like some some weird heads to them so they're not like you can tell that it's a wrench but maybe like the shape is weird or something like that uh, maybe one is like super bulky and the other one for like I don't know like some huge some huge bolt on like a on like a big mech or something like that you would need like a big one Maybe, maybe, yeah, for a hammer, maybe it's just like a, a, a cool, cool tip of the hammer, like more of like a, like a mall, you know, like from a medieval times, instead of being just a simple hammer, maybe it's like an like intricate design, like a, that looks like a regular hammer, <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe like the back here is like a different tool or something. Yeah, that's actually, that's always the case. Um, oh, let me try to find a reference instead. I don't have a good visual library for, for hammers. Uh, cyberpunk. Hammer. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about. You know, like something like this, where maybe like you hit it, and then there's like a, a detonation on top, or like uh, at at impact, and so like you hit it, and then it even more, I don't know, something something like that. Or just like a weird shape, you know, like you look at that stuff, like the yellow one. You look at this, you're like, ah, that's a hammer for sure, but different. That kind of stuff. So familiar, but. But not too familiar. And I'm guessing this is the this is the energy core. Would be cool to have a uh, uh, 
it's en like an en energy core, like it'll probably be, you know, it'll probably be hidden. Like, like think of like Iron Man, right? He's got something here, but it's a cover on top. Uh, I'm trying to find like, I'm trying to think of cool ways to to encase this core, but still make it visible somehow. It'd be like a like a lantern, you know, like a grill around it. And it's like in the middle here, kind of shining through the, the slit in the. Uh, in the cage. Either way, uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a really cool touch. And you could have like all sorts of like cool pipes going in here, like to feed the energy. Yeah, that works a lot better too. Yeah, so far so good. Very nice. Ooh, ooh, <clears throat> Scott. What up? So I think I'm done for now. I'm not sure what else I can improve. How I can improve it. How else? What else can I do to improve it? Yeah, that was, that was nice. Uh, the only thing is like, it gets really dark in here. Like we lose a lot of those details. But maybe it's just a matter of, instead of using lines, you know, like black lines, maybe just use lighter lines. Not that light, obviously. You know, like when they're again something dark, just to make them to make them more visible. And then when they're again something light, then they get revert back to being black. And this way we'll be able to see, you know, see all those details. That'd be nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the brown here. <clears throat> I feel like that's a little too different than these. Like if they're uh, like burgundy sails. Then sure, but then I think when they're against the lights, maybe they'll be a little, a little more red. Yeah. I don't know. I think I would just remove a little bit of saturation here. Just for the sake of the image so that we can read, we can read things better. So either like go, go much lighter in here. Oh, actually, regardless, <coughs> I would uh, saturate the wings, uh, the, the, the sails a bit. Super saturated right there. Uh, when there's lack of light, you lose a lot of saturation and so maybe like just the same color but desaturated and maybe just a little lighter you can see those details better and then maybe this way you don't need to make the the ropes lighter maybe that'll be again uh, that would be enough contrast so that we can see them against uh, the sails yeah maybe a little bit more of that a little bit desaturated a little bit lighter just just so that we can see the difference between the the line arts and and the flat colors but they're not yeah this guy looks nice see some some vampires approaching or maybe those are just bats probably vampires yeah man yeah, just uh, the saturation in the wing, in the ring. Why do I keep saying this? In the sail. And uh, that'll be golden. <laughs> that ship has come a long way. It's been sailing for a while. Finally, it arrived. All right, Daniel. Uh, All right, so my goal, uh, my goals with this one was to practice drawing face, hair, and painting. Okay, and painting overall. I would love to hear your opinion about them. Nice face, nice hair. Uh, the, the 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 dress though a little too fuzzy. Um, I would be curious to see what reference you use for that. Did you use a reference? If not, you should have. Always use references, unless these things become easy, so easy because you've done it so many times that you can wing it, and it's still gonna. Still gonna look like the references that you've used in the past. So yeah, love the face. Uh, very nice eyes. Nice color in here. Ooh, look at that. The hair is nice. The hair, good structure. I think uh, yeah, everything could be just better defined. You know, a little bit, especially the especially the dress. So the dress, the form of the dress, we we kind of lose it a little bit. Uh, that helps in here. Like that's pretty good. It's more like below this this part. Like all of that gets a little fuzzier. 
But above that, pretty good. Pretty damn good. So let's see what we can do. Volumes, right? When we're shading, it's all about the volumes. So I think the, the dress here gets a little fuzzy, especially uh, where the, like the her right arm would be. Like where does it start? Where does it end? I don't know. So let's try to clarify that. Here, that's gonna be the dress. And so on the edges, we can add a little bit of shadow. shape and cylindrical volume going a little bit less light in the armpits and, uh, more likely to be loss of a uh, light and then the belly maybe he's gonna poke against the dress a bit the belly always sticks out a little and then going towards the crotch and that's gonna recede again He looks, he looks a little pregnant. And uh, then we'd want to do the same thing with the sleeves here. So make those feel a little bit more like cylinders. Shadows inside here. Alrighty, it's starting to take, take shape a little bit. Feels less flat. Going in that direction, right? So from here, obviously, we're just working on the big, the big uh, volumes now, and we would, uh, we would want to go, <coughs> excuse me, in the, uh, in the medium-sized details, and then the small details. So medium-sized details could be like the medium folds in here. What that would look like? Just gather some, some baggy sleeves, increasing the contrasts where needed. Yeah, figuring out like the overall values. Maybe I'm gonna contour here on the color, making sure that this is nice and crisp. And uh, kind of overall that. So just a little sharpening everywhere because uh, you have nice colors i mean it's, it's pretty saturated but uh, you know it makes her face glow even more as a result because it's the most saturation yes that, uh, that we have uh, i mean you could maybe like warm up the top of their the top of our shoulders here if the light is strong enough all right make it feel like it's a little a little brighter Yeah, overall, it's, it's really nice. And the hair. Like, so far, you have kind of like the, the big, like the, the, the base structure of it, right? So the big, big locks, big sections of the hair. So maybe we could define those a little bit better. So, like, here, making sure it's nice and, nice and sharp. Split in here down the middle of the head. Where she parts her hair. Parts. And so then you have one big like one big lock here that goes this way, another one that goes the other way, and then the rest of the hair kind of just slick back and then all of that's kind of merged in the back here into this 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 swirly thing yep um 
so a little bit more definition just ordering stuff around uh, and uh, use reference for the dress if you have it because the dress is a big part you know it's a, it's a lot of shading there and uh, ooh. <laughs> and, and, and uh, it's the part that needs the most work so definitely reference would help yeah, that was very nice very nice tone especially in the skin What's up, Sam? So here is the study I did from reference. Um, oh, what kind of reference? One thing that bothers me about my digital drawing process is how unclean it is. The most obvious parts would be the line art and the shading in some parts. Maybe it has something to do with me keeping things to minimum. <laughs> mm. I use only two or four brushes and two layers. How can I fix my unclean process? And what kind of exercise would you recommend? Uh, <clears throat> Well, um, yes, you know, the process may be a little too simple. So it forces you to to stack too much in, into one into like one or two layers. So I would, uh, I would keep at bare minimum, like one for the lines, uh, the lines alone, you know, just, just line arts, one for the grayscale and then like your shading, uh, one for your, your colors, like your flat colors and, and one for the lights. Maybe two lights if you have more than one light. But in here, it looks like just one. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then the background layer. So, you know, we're what, like five, six easily <coughs> at the bare minimum. So, it's pretty good though. Um, oh, never mind. Okay, so that's the reference. Ah, I see, I see. <laughs> like, where is there? Why is there two of the same? It's not the same. So, which one is yours? That one? Nice. That's pretty damn equivalent. Yeah, dude, like maybe the yeah, the legs a little little longer, like the, the thigh a little longer here in your case. You know, like this this here wraps a little sooner. Or maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just that highlights. Yeah, it's about the same size. Never mind. Never mind that. Uh, nice shading. Nice. Uh, so it depends. You know what? For studies, it's a little different. Um, maybe you're just focusing on certain things in your study. Maybe you're not trying to, to recreate the whole thing. <coughs> like maybe the line art's not really the problem usually. So maybe you're studying something like the colors, you know. Uh, But I think it would help at least to for you to identify your your strength and your your weaknesses if you have all of these these steps that I mentioned in, in their own layers on their own layers. And uh, yeah, just make it a habit of of going about it this way. Kind of like a recipe for the process. And, and and yeah process aside i think you did a great job here like i don't know if you color picked if you did i wouldn't do that so i would try to just eyeball the color and try to get like a similar color on your side except like this and I'm painting here i'm not saying that's what you did at all if you didn't you know if your eye if you, if you eyeballed it then great job um, yeah sergey probably a lot of people have been asking for that. It's on my list. It's on my list to do. Um, yeah, so I think it would help with uh, with cleanliness, you know, like that kind of stuff here, where you go a little over the edge. Uh, that looks a little dirty. It would be better if the line art was on the line art was on top of everything, and then this way, you know, you can you can kind of tell that's exactly what this artist did. Because it didn't, he messed up here a little bit. <laughs> he or she, uh, probably a dude. But the line runs on top, and so we don't notice it as much in the line. At least you notice it bleeding here. They could have erased that. Like his flat colors were probably, probably badly painted in. But uh, but the line runs on top of things, and so the line still looks pretty clean. In your case, I can tell that the lines underneath because you painted over. So just those those small things. 
but uh but as a study you did good man really good luke so this week's uh this week i'm still <coughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. still um still continuing my background studies i'm submitting two pieces this time the first is the finished color of my last uh my study last week while the second is a cityscape painting from reference because of how complex the reference is i want to simplify the details <coughs> excuse me of the reference into shapes values and blocks of colors to hint at a more detailed cityscape please let me know how all this works Composition is still a little strange, you know. Yeah, not a big deal, but like probably the composition to be tighter. A better composition would probably be something like this. Not blue. Come on. Yeah, like that would be a better frame for her. You know, if there were, if you were to start from scratch, because <clears throat> then she's she's in the center. She's the center of attention. She's clearly the focal point. Uh, and there's not too much space behind her. Not too much, I mean, not too much space behind her compared to the space in front of her. Technically speaking, that'd be better composition, but. But as a study. Maybe not the most important parts. What you got out of the, the, the folds, the, the anatomy here, the, your shading, your your use of colors, how you treated the difference, uh, the, the amount of details and, you know, brought it down to something that's more manageable. Uh, awesome. Really, really good. Yeah. And this one here, also a really good job. Really feel the really feel the, the dampness of the environment. Feels wet, feels foggy, feels humid. Uh, with something like that, you yeah, I would recommend the same you know same same logic as with this one here. So the stuff in the foreground add a little bit more to it. Like these these highlights here, if those got a little more precise. A little more intense i think it'd be, it'd be nicer it would it would push the depth of the of the painting a lot more like your treatment of the details in the back here like starting like uh starting starting here and and beyond that perfect you know you don't need more don't need more details than that uh, actually yeah that's probably true for up to this this part here so all of that uh, yeah, you really don't need more more than that. That works really well. Uh, it's just everything that's in front of that. And then you would gradually maybe want to introduce a little bit more details, a little more details as you get closer to the camera. Like, uh, yeah, like those details in the street, like this stuff, like that kind of stuff here. Those small details in the roads, those would be nice to add. Because the, the, the gradients of details would really help push the depth. Just like in real life, you know, like if you look you look down to your feet, you can see a lot more details, a lot more of the like the dirt, the small, whatever it is. If it's a carpet, you can see like the, the fibers in the carpet. But if you look at a carpet from a distance, yeah, that, be, that all becomes a blur. That's how you want to treat it. So, yeah. Maybe it's a little sharp. These puddles a little more detailed the detail in the road it's gonna feel a lot closer to us and it should look quite nice so yeah, if you have like any time to spend on details spend it in the foreground but other than that nailed it yeah it's also going to give us like a point of focus because when everything is a little fuzzy it's hard to know exactly like where to look at but if you have some details in the foreground here that are a little, little sharper, then 
that that's an easy target all right this is where we want to look at first and then we kind of travel yes and no because there's no there's nothing that's interesting in the foreground like the but to answer your question you would probably want like that card here like the first row of card to be a little more detailed because this is probably like one of the main focal points in this image so if that first car is a little better a little better defined uh, to go along with the higher level of detail in the foreground i think that'd be perfect the cars behind completely fine but like these might be just like the, the top of the hood here maybe that's a little, a little sharper can see the window better it's just a little more structure and then uh, that's going to make those details in the foreground work perfectly You look at this photo, you know, for example, like the my eyes go to, to these highlights. It's, that's interesting looking. Like these these small details here in the road. Like you you look at those and it's it's kind of like natural. It's up it's close to you. But you also spend a lot of time looking at those two cars. And so looking at the reference, you know, try to try to analyze kind of where your gaze is going, how much time you're spending everywhere. Um, and that's in that order that's that's where the details should go. But you always have to have a little more in the foreground, otherwise it's just it looks weird. It tends to it tends to flatten the image. It's like the this, that's the, that effect has a name. You know, it has a name is a like tilt shift effect, where the foreground is blurred, the background is blurred, and only like the middle plane is kind of in focus. It tends to miniaturize everything and uh, it flattens things by default. So try not to do that, <laughs> unless that's the, the desired effect, of course. <clears throat> All right, Warren, what up? Um, I am doing great. I hope you had a good week as well. So this week, I don't really have much to share. I've lately just been doing studies, not really making much for myself or doing full illustrations. Uh, I've tried it, but nothing seems to be working. And I'm not sure how to fix that. I know I still have things to learn and master. It feels like I'm ready to start making full illustrations. Sadly, when I attempt it, it doesn't work out at all. It feels like I haven't learned a thing. You, so uh, something you know uh that tends to happen happens to me too is like the, the more tools that you have the more you want to use them and uh sometimes it's just it's how to use them all in combination that becomes the tricky the trickier part that you might have not have enough experience to do so yet so i could reduce the scope uh reduce the level like the, the difficulty level it's just like try to execute whatever like the the try to execute the the smaller challenge extremely well rather than tackling a massive challenge and executing it poorly uh, that's always going to make you feel better it's uh it's better also just for progression you want to you want to put a little bit of a challenge in front of you but you don't want you know you don't want the challenge to be overwhelming so that it just completely kills your motivation so you want you want enough challenge that you can you can surpass it and move on to the next one just think of it in terms of like just a bunch of walls in front of you if uh if there are like you know walls that you can kind of reach and kind of clam over uh like back to back to back to back that's all right you know you can see yourself doing that but if the wall is like 10 meter tall and like that's the first one uh, a little a little harder to motivate yourself to do that <clears throat> so reduce the scope and uh try to execute really really well a smaller scope so obviously i'm going to keep um uh, doing the fundamentals as warm-ups to proper for proper studies anatomy perspective but i'm not sure how to improve this feeling i have <coughs> excuse me is the best is the best way to tackle this keep studying or is it to start making full pieces and learn so like the fun the fun aspect is super important here if you're just doing studies and you're having a ton of fun doing studies says nobody 
uh, then great. But uh, but yeah, once again, it's not really common. So what's 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 common is what kind of what I'm referring to here. So you start with a study. So it's most, mostly a study. You know, you start with something good, and you're like, all right, that's starting to look pretty cool. And then you were just planning to go into it as a study, but always leave doors open. You know, if it if your study if your study turns out great, you're like, well, maybe I'll push this. To, maybe I'll push this some more. Maybe I'll I'll give her an armor. You know, turn that into just a just a character design thing. And then she's on she's on a little little thing here, a little railing. And you don't need to do any more than that. You know, it's no background for now. None of that. And then you know, work on your work on your drawing. Cool armor. All right. Nice, nice. Cool hats. Uh, and then if you're inspired to keep going, then keep going. Keep adding on top, on top, on top until until you're satisfied. But but that's what I mean by the challenge being being pretty limited at the beginning. Your challenge was just to do a good study. And then you can increase the scope as you go. You know, like you could start with this and be like, all right, all right I'm just going to do the study now. The, the study now. And then you end up with this result and like, hmm, all right, maybe I, maybe I could see her as like being like a, a queen in her throne or something like that. Again, no background. It doesn't need to be any grandiose idea. It can just be like, oh, it could be like a cool character concept, like a queen, badass queen in a throne. All right. And then you turn that into that. So the scope improve, uh, this, the scope really affects your 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 uh your motivation it affects my motivation it affects everybody's motivation it's uh, i mean i see this with my kids too i mean when the challenge is too great they're just not gonna try they, they don't they lose motivation and then you just gotta make it hard enough that the challenge is, is like, oh it's a challenge but i could win i could make this i could do it and then uh and it's stacking those challenge the smaller challenges back to back to back to back Hopefully that makes sense. Moving on to Santiago. What's up, Scott? <coughs> You're welcome. Congrats on completing her. All right, Santiago, what's up? Uh, how's everything going? Good. Very good. My throat is giving me a little hard time, but uh, but so far so good. I'm not coughing too much. <clears throat> uh, this week, I wanted to show you a couple of torso studies I did in the last two days before work, trying to go back to basics since I've been having kind of an art block lately. There you go. I had a couple questions regarding anatomy studying. I've been doing it since the beginning of this year, and I've checked multiple anatomy books and, and resources such as George Brinkman and manga materials. However, what do you think is the best way to approach study from um, from this kind of resources? Should I just read the entire book first and then get to sketching or studying from what I learned? Or maybe sketch and study along the way. And how much time do you think I should take with each book? Also feedback from my studies are welcome. I focus on flexion and extension of multiple angles and a little bit of force running. All right. Um, so uh, how to study from books? Ew. I'm probably the, the worst person to ask uh, to ask that that to ask that from. Uh, I don't study from books at all. I'm just I need a lot of different angles to my to my learning process. So I need I need uh, I need the words spoken if possible because I don't have to read them. And then at the same time, since they're spoken, I can also see the thing and also maybe yeah like hear on top of that and presented in a in a short way in an entertaining way uh all the things that a book can't really do you know the book is pretty like you gotta read the letters that's it read the words and uh that's why i don't know that's why i feel like learning from videos is the the best way possible to learn i don't think anything can come even close to that uh, science agrees with that too uh, it's just whenever you have, whenever you study something using multiple, multiple different stimulation sources uh, that try to try to convey the same message, try to communicate the same information, it's always better. People always get better results. 
So, uh, and uh, like the way that I study, for example, maybe that that's gonna help you. But uh, usually, I'll I'll uh, study from uh, from a photo reference, you know, something pretty basic. And next to it, I'll always have uh, like an anatomy study, like my my trusted little bro over here. And and maybe uh, the anatomy software, you know, the anatomy app that I have. So let's say, let's say I want to remove some muscles, like remove that layer to, to see what's underneath uh, for stuff that's a little more complicated to get a better view of things. But anyways, it's always those two. So I have like this, the reference itself, what I'm trying to draw. And then I have the the anatomy reference for the, the structure and for just uh, to make sure that everything is correct. And I use both at the same time. So I'll, I'll work off of a, like a, uh, like a photo that might not show the muscles that well, right? So if it's just like a regular person, you're not going to see all the crazy definition. So I'll use that <clears throat> and then I'll slap on the muscles using the photo re the, the reference model. And like those two combined just forces me to really analyze what I'm, what I'm drawing first, the photo for the references, that kind of stuff. And, and then the anatomy figure for, for the details, the anatomy, obviously. And this, I mean, I feel like I learned so much every time that I do that. And then, yeah, on top of that, you can use you can use the techniques, you know, like the because I have my own constru construction like recipe at this point, so I use that on top of those those two uh, those two references. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you can use you know whatever if that's if that's what you like. I have all these uh, all these loops here. Maybe you take that technique from the book and then use different references and then kind of combine all of it. But um, but often you should always often you should always often you should try to to challenge yourself by just doing one from imagination. So. Um, I think the I think the the best case scenario maybe it's a little little can become a little chore chorey choreish uh, a little daunting to do over time and repeating it again and again and again. But uh, like if you if you do one from reference with a reference photo with the, re the anatomy figure next to it and uh, like that's a proper reference. Then after that, try to do one from memory. So one that's in a similar pose, maybe not exactly the same pose, but in a similar pose. And try to do it from memory without without references. And if you have any questions at any point, you can look at your anatomy study, uh, your anatomy figure, fill in the blanks, and then keep going this way. Oh, to to be fair though, those are really good. Um, yeah, the biggest issue it's not so much I think the like the construction method that you're using, or it's really the proportions in general feel a little a little wonky. And it's tricky because uh, I mean, especially like as a dude, drawing the female body is a lot harder, I think, than it is for for for, for women. Might also be the fact that I've been drawing just muscle dudes all my life <laughs> at Blizzard, not so much female bodies, so that's what I'm focusing on right now. But uh, also, I don't get to see that in the mirror all the time, and so the subtleties and the curves and all that stuff—it's a little more foreign to me. Um, yeah, anyways, those are pretty good. It's just like some some small stuff sometimes. Like uh, maybe the ribcage here goes a little too low. Maybe the shoulders a little too big. That's a little too thick, you know, for uh, the length of her her torso. That feels that feels better, but like, the breasts feel a little, a little squarey, <clears throat> and the overlap of the stomach. On top of the rib cage, probably it would go a little higher than that. I don't think it would be this long. Anymore like that. It's just it's small stuff. The more that you do that, <clears throat> excuse me, the more that you do those kinds of studies, uh, making sure that you bring in different types of different types of references and using multiple references. That's why that's what I'm doing, right? So using a photo and the anatomy reference, combining references, huge, huge, huge for learning, uh, especially something as complicated as anatomy. 
kind of man. I recommend that you do that. Give it a shot. <clears throat> and kind of what I was uh, saying at the beginning also, try to try to take frequent breaks, you know, in your studies. So like do maybe one and then take a, a few seconds off. Defocus, think of nothing and then go back in. Like eh, you go full steam, full focus, full relax, full focus, full relax. Rather than like long, like hour long stretches of, of just studying. Like you're not going to learn as much that way. Believe me, bro. Uh, what's up, Sam? So the year is 20, 20, 20, 20, let's say 2025. A mad, gen uh, a mad geneticist, genet geneticist obsessed with humanity's evolution decides to take matter into his own hands. So these are some recent art assets that I've been working on for a game my buddy is making. The one, um, the one with the flare is a whip. Oh, okay. Uh oh, <laughs> work in progress. There we go. Uh, this is the first time in a while that I made art for a project instead of uh, for art school. Assignments, thoughts. Yeah, I mean you should do more of that. You know, if that's fun, definitely. Like mix it up. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is almost done. Oh boy. Got a little bit left in the tank. Hopefully it'll last until the end. <clears throat> so that's one case where I'm not gonna be like, uh, you should you should define the silhouette better. Cause that's that's meant you know to be like some characters kind of creeping out of the creeping out of the shadow led by just one light source um so nice it looks nice the main thing i would say with this one i think it would be just the intensity of the light making sure that it's a little more intense towards i mean you know right next to the flare Shh. aren't these like super bright Shh. and uh yeah like on the face, on the arms, on top of the torso, on top of the chest. Maybe just making that a lot brighter. It's like the real one. So down here, I think that's fine. But uh, towards the top here, right next to the flare, right next to the light source, I think it could go much, much lighter. intensity fade away with distance nice, nice fold overall like uh, I love uh, I love this stuff here nice nice rhythm in the folds like they're not all the same size uh, that looks good too here very nice very nice maybe for this one at the at the uh, the elbow level uh maybe no folds there would happen you know because it's pretty straight there's no reason for the fabric to bend and so maybe that could be just a straight line maybe like some folds but along the entire length of the arm uh, maybe like changing a little bit of the the shadows you know, something like that. but nothing too crazy i would think and then this one here. The only issue there. Go away from my gun. Shoot. You're not helping. Uh, just like this can be summed up as a cylinder, right? And if you had folds going around it, it would follow the curve of the cylinder that's coming towards us. Like those folds here are like going the opposite way. It just makes makes the arm feel like a little broken. It's hard to imagine the volume of the arm underneath the fabric when it's when the folds are going in the wrong direction. I think if you did more of that more of these. Probably don't need 
much. Kind of like the other arm. Sounds delicious, Kevin. And I do have Jolly Ranchers. Ooh, I might treat myself tonight. <clears throat> that other guy. Yeah, that looks super cool. to say this one looks nice man uh, maybe like the, the the way the fingers are holding the thing feels maybe like his the palm of his hand is a little too too big compared to the length of the fingers like for the thumb to go to go that way and then mm. eh. maybe it's just slightly bigger fingers slightly bigger fingers This way, if you can see like the top of the thumb, then it's impossible for the fingers to go like around. Uh, it's very hard to hold this way. So just like not a supernatural pose for the hands. You just take a photo of yourself in that in that exact pose, like holding something small. I think yeah. I think that would work better. Or just have the vial or have the thumb here. Just taken out. This way it was more like this, you know. You can see like the the inside of the thumb. I think that we're better, probably the, the least amount of work required. Uh... Yeah, here I think I would just maybe add some some saturation in the skin. Like the guy looks completely dead. Maybe he is. But like very muddy, like very grayscale. Especially, you know, this part here. Like if this glows so much, let's say he's wearing like a, a white, you know, a white gown or is that how you say it? Like doctors, how do they call their their robes, <laughs> whatever. But maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a little lighter. Maybe more of a like a lighter blue tint. Uh, same thing with the face. Maybe introducing a little bit more like, yeah. Uh, skin colors rather than or maybe he's maybe he's dead i don't know i think a little bit of color to to balance it out because right now it's very cool very cool not there's no warmth at all so you're kind of losing that balance between cool and warm colors and here not as much you have a little bit of blue so that kind of that kind of saves it and you're like your shadow colors you know it's kind of like this, this yellow a little bit desaturated definitely helps to desaturate a bit more too uh, but this one feels better already just because of the blue a little bit a little bit a little bit better balance these are nice man <laughs> shoe fly gonna get you Uh, I'm just trying to 
and see who this is. Wilder. Alright, dude. Man. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> I thought maybe that was like the name of your character. Nope, that's your name. Right on. Alright, so in term five character design chapter. So uh I'm looking for general critique. Poses without references. Gotcha. Have been practicing poses and anatomy lots of boxes and there's no I want to try and try it out myself. I know. You're most most definitely allowed, especially when you get good results like this. Clearly you've been studying. That's nice, dude. And uh, yeah, love the fix here. So it felt a little like uh, like the floor is a little uneven, like she's climbing a stair almost. Love this, love this change in the leg. Yeah, that works. That worked better too already. Either of those two work quite well. Oh, there we go. So you want for this? Man, that was good. Those details. Nice rendering. That's my kind of art. Perfect. Bunch of cool references. Which one did you sell for? Watermelon and blue. Yeah. Those are your two. That's a good one. Get out of here. Them flies way too familiar. So, love the colors. Very well done. Uh, no question as to what the focal point is. Very successful in that sense. Uh, yeah, very nice. Very nice textures. Like everything reads as mostly as what it should be. Yeah, nice metals. Nice kind of like brush, dirty brush metal. Uh, shape language wise, pretty successful. I think the only thing maybe like, and uh, I think a lot of people will do that too, is to uh, uh, match like the shoulder pads with the knee pads, or at least because it covers like a similar part of the body, right? It's like a joint that's exposed, like a big joint that's exposed. Same thing with the knees. Um, so often, I don't know about these here. Yes, yeah, definitely similar. Like this one's probably the most the most different one. But you know, kind of like rounded, rounded, spiky-ish. It's very similar. Like it's maybe like a simpler, simpler version of the shoulder pad. I think that's gonna. I think that's a good way to approach armor. Like this one here feels very angular, you know, like uh, like diamond shapes, sharp edges, and the shoulders, go almost like the complete opposite of that. Like I mean, you have you have some some similarities, but feels pretty different. So if anything, like the shoulders for me stand out a little bit as being kind of eh, a little little different than the rest. So it could be just your treatment of the surface here. So maybe if it's uh, if your shading is a little bit more angular, for example, uh, it, lo it looks cool, by the way. It's really cool. I don't know how much you want to change it, but you know. If you're more like, you know, like more stripy or hard edges, I mean, you can do a much better job than that, but, but something that feels more angular, 
Doesn't need to be exactly the same details, but something that feels, yeah, less like a bubble. I would say probably the same thing for the, the chest plate too. Like those shapes, that like barrel shape, almost a, yeah, it looks like a barrel. Not, I can't spot it anywhere else. So that one kind of breaks a little bit, the, the shape language. But that's about it. You know, if you had, uh, I don't know, something, something that's a little bit more spiky here, maybe like the, the plate in the middle there, maybe covers more of it. the shape anyways you know maybe that'd be enough uh, yeah like something that looks maybe a little bit more like uh, like the sides here the hip the hip guards so it's small stuff like that but I mean overall dude like you did a fantastic job here um, the other one maybe like for just presentation's sake feels like I don't know, maybe it wouldn't, maybe it wouldn't be better, uh, but I have a hunch that it, it probably would. Like if we could see the silhouette better, I think, I think that'd be nicer. So right now, it's, we can't really see, you know, how thick her legs are. Maybe they're skinny. It's hard to tell. Back here, that there's a, there is a back light, so it's not like you completely ignored it. But maybe. It was kind of like a, like a stage. If, the, if you could feel something behind her, maybe she'd feel even more, even more of a badass. Let's try something real quick. <laughs> Perfect selection. Now from this side, I need to. Stop tickling me, fly. Got right enough out of you. The last one. What? Come on. What's going on? So I don't know. Uh, let's add a little, little something back there. Maybe, maybe floor. It's pretty dark. Mm. I don't know. I mean, it could literally be anything. Maybe just a little bit of fog, you know, mixed in with the darkness. I feel like that would make her pop even more, like the contrast on the on the armor, like because you go you go into into dark color, like into like blacks a lot, which is nice. You know, it just adds more contrast. But maybe we lose some of that uh, as a result of the, the background being so black. I don't know. Like personally, I think it could be super extra nice to have a little bit of color behind, make her silhouette her silhouette stand out even more. I mean, overall, dude, killer work. Yeah, I think you can still, you can still like fine tune, refine a little bit of the, the the shape language, but other than that, hell yeah, that was quite a treat for the eyes, <clears throat> Kevin. Um, so this week, I'm posting a personal piece with uh, most of the line work done, needed to make a small break to shake off the art burnouts. I seem to be having trouble with forearms and hands. How is this? What can I improve on and what do I need to change? 
<clears throat> also, is it okay if I look into color theories? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You can always, always jump ahead if you want. Um, as long as the overall, you know, like the way that you tackle, you're learning. As long as, as, long as you, you focus on on the same-ish path uh, that, that I recommend in the term, you'll be all good. But of course, you can always jump ahead if you're curious. Um, no problem. Fly. There's nothing to eat around here. Um, so I want to do more personal pieces and take a break from the fundamental practices. Yep, no worries. There's a limit to how much we can study and enter before we need to do some personal stuff, <clears throat> have a little bit of fun. You're very welcome. Sprinkling some uh, some personal pieces left and right. It's always always a good idea. So line work done here. Almost work. Almost done. Looks nice, man. Hands look nice. Arms feel pretty convincing. Like maybe. Maybe like this, this muscle here would be quite bad. Like that. Um, so yeah, I mean the other side, I think he did better. Brachialis, bicep. important here in the middle sandwich in between the tricep and the, and the bicep um, but uh, uh, maybe one thing like ah, it's a bummer too because it's a nice hand but uh, but like the angle of the hand I feel like uh, what is it like right now <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 there you go it's kind of like that <laughs> So hard when it's inverted, uh, but it need it should need it would need to be more like this. <laughs> hard to explain, but um, like the way that he's holding the sword right now would probably suggest that the sword is like like that. Unless you can like really relax the pinky, you know, the like really relax this finger here indicate that there's no there's no pressure yet so he's just kind of just going like this and then the rest of the fingers don't matter so much in that case yeah maybe but otherwise it feels like the grip it doesn't agree with the direction of the sword that one that one's fine that one's good like we can see more of the top of the knuckles here less of the the opening here less of the thumb in perspective and that, that makes that makes the angle for that sword work much better. So yeah, a little, a little more of that on the other side. Um, and the only other thing, I'll say like nice, nice bud, bruh. Uh, is he going to be holding something? I would think so. Otherwise, it just looks like weird, weird way to to punch somebody. <laughs> Come at me, man! I'm gonna mess you up. <laughs> Probably be more like more on the inside here, like more like stronger line here on the top uh, instead of curving outwards. But he's probably gonna be holding something. Oh, a big chain! There you go. Perfect. In that case, yes, that totally totally reads as that, like he's holding something. Nice, very nice. Line's pretty clean so far. Hell yeah. Good stuff, man. And then, and then there was Hana. What up, Hana? Whoa. Whoa, 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 that's a lot of drawing. Holy balls. All right. Uh, 
my week has been great. Thanks, Hannah. So this week is a bit, uh, is a bits and bobs week. Uh, lots of doodles, stuff for art, fights, and a few studies. As well as some comic lines, of course. I'm not looking for any feedback in particular, just say anything that jumps out to you. Right on. Oh, I love this. Productive, productive woman. And all this stuff. Nice way to treat the crowd. Uh, that totally works. No difference, you know. Uh, whether you draw them all, draw them all, spend a ton of time, or, or just do that, that works really well too. Great solution. Uh... <laughs> nice one. Only thing I'll say here, like beautiful, beautiful drawing. Love the perspective of the legs here, spot on. Um, it's just the hands feel weird, like they're a bit too chill, like they're paralyzed, you know. That one's not, uh, maybe that one less, but like this one, it feels like like any anything, like maybe a fist, maybe a fist like this, maybe maybe he's about to grab something, or maybe he's about to cast a spell. Just feels like too relaxed for his pose. I think that's it. Just, there's a disconnect between the pose, the, the gesture in the hands, and the rest of the figure. But other than that, <whistles> beautiful. No reps. Nice. That was good. Yeah, there's not much of a difference to be honest. Ref or no ref. Get it, Hannah. Awesome stuff. a little long is it is it not mm. maybe just a knee here maybe it's just too thick here yeah that's very feminine um maybe the dude is exactly like that i don't know Seems like the leg, like you would see more of the more of the glutes here. Like the leg going into the hips here, and then like the glutes flexing to be in that position. Maybe not. I don't know what reference you used. I feel like that would be a little more natural, maybe. Anyways, awesome stuff, Hannah. That's a good student right there. <laughs> That's a lot of work. And uh, yeah, no wonder you're leveling up like crazy. Like it's been a while since I've seen, I don't even know if I've seen something like this from you, but like something a little rougher, like a little loose, but, but you can tell, you know, like the experience is there. 
mm, like just how like this just the perspective it might seem simple like the perspective on a plate here perspective on that v the chest plates just the position of the legs and the foreshortening in here mm. Mwah! beautiful awesome stuff all right well that's gonna be it for today uh not quite seven hours pretty close so hope that was helpful uh, I had a lot of fun going through all of this. Happy that I didn't cough too much. Uh, and I still have some voice left. So that's good. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for everybody that submitted something. Um, had, a, had a good time. And uh, even if you didn't, you know, even, even if you didn't submit something, hopefully the feedback here still might have been related, uh, uh, might have been helpful for whatever you're working on. Or at least some of it. And uh, once again, you know, if you made it all of the way through, you're crazy. But I appreciate it. And anybody that just swung by, also much, much appreciated. Um, I hope to see you guys next week. I hope that you're going to have a good rest of your weekend, a good creative week ahead. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>